Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Alright, let's continue with some space exploration. Uh, and I suppose it's high time we went and got the rest of these dimensional anchors built. Uh, I do have a couple, actually four. Yeah, I've got four anchors worth of tesseracts reserved here at any given time. That's good. Um, but I think we already made one. Uh, here it is. It's in this logistic block somewhere. Uh, let's see. Anchor. Come to me, please. And... Uh, it turns out we need to put one anchor at each star. Um, and I suppose any eight stars will do. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven-ish, I don't know. Um, I don't think I've got eight stars where we've already got a bunch of solar power set up at them. Um, which construction ships? This one's already... There's already an anchor here. Did you run out of scaffolding, or...? No. Okay. Um... But yeah, we'll... We'll need to go and spam... I believe I calculated that it was 20 blocks of solar panels like this. Um... at each star where we're going to have to support a dimensional anchor. So that's cool. Um, 255 times 20 uh, times 12.1 megawatts. Yeah. It'll vary slightly from star to star, but this is about how much we need. Uh, let's see, so that is 5,100 uh, flat solar panels. We can only... What the... Oh, there's no scaffolding here. That's... Oh, I see. Right, we haven't... Uh, we haven't moved this over yet. Um, I think I want to make this... Storage chests, actually, with a filter for scaffolding. And the bots are going to do the exact opposite from taking from this evenly. Hmm. I was just thinking if I could... Well, actually, all I have to do... Uh, is wait until it's completely empty. Before we summon another train of scaffolding. And then, once that's happened, once this has been empty, we could probably... I don't know, if we summon even two trains of scaffolding, won't that just get more and more imbalanced? Uh, in which case... Yeah, I think... I think what we need to do here... is have some storage for scaffolding over here. Um, so that's three train loads. Hmm, I would have to make this like purple chests, but then I would have to read from the logistic network, unless... 
unless... Uh, I suppose I could add a pylon way over here just to transmit that data across. Um, how many connections does this have? Five? I think that's the maximum. Hmm. Um... I would... I would prefer... If we could... Connect... Oh wait, it doesn't have to... No, I wanted to connect this just because apparently having it disconnected from things makes it another electrical network. And that's just that little bit bad for UPS. Uh, I guess I can just remove these wires here. That maybe even looks a little bit neater, I guess. Then again, we're just going to run it straight over this ship again. Whatever. Alright, so we're measuring... We're measuring the contents of these chests, these fluids, and these chests down here. A rubber band Rambo. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Is this a new Terraria update? I hope not. Um, Alright, so we can definitely... We don't have any other... Oh, we do have storage chests here that are unfiltered. Hmm. I guess we'll only summon three train uh, three trains worth of scaffolding. Uh, so 3248. And we'll turn these into purple chests. Um, so that's like uh, a bit less than 12 chests of... I mean, I could do the math and request exactly what fits in here. Um, I might do that, actually. 4,800 times 12 is 57,600. Okay. Um, so that is 12 chests of scaffolding. And we're trying to fill 10 chests of scaffolding if we've got two construction ships here. That's going to make it so much faster to actually fill these um, when the time comes. Stream says it's Terraria? Oh no. No! Uh, and now I'm clicking the wrong thing too quickly. Let me just fix this. Uh... Space exploration part a million. Factorio. Uh, modded. And done. Okay. And let me just confirm that that's been updated. Thanks for pointing that out. Alright, cool. I'll have to remember to change the title for the VOD as well. Uh, this goes here now. Okay. I've been lied to, yes. Westu, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Chucky, good to see you again also. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well as well. Okay. 
Um, so these two have all the scaffolding they can eat. I don't want to launch this ship yet. It's going to kidnap about 600,000 bots with uh, scaffolding in them. Um, which star... I guess Vazanis is the obvious choice. Is going to be one of our anchors. We do need to add an entire... Um, Uh, yep, 20. We do need to add an entire 20 squares um, to support the anchor here. Let's measure this out a little. Well, let's get the ship in motion first. Uh, we're going to Vazanis. And we've only got... Um, 960 times 2. Uh, it actually takes just a bit more, like 25% more than one ship. Uh, that's in terms of solar panels that we're delivering in one go. There's probably, we probably need way more scaffolding. Uh, 4096 times 20. Uh, I already know, this is 4,800, so we're not even going to be close. Um, 4,800 times 5, 24, yeah, we're go it's going to take four trips, or four ships, um, to fill out the solar panels that we need. To support our, um... To support our habit each time. Do I have all of my construction ships in one place? That would be convenient. Nope. Of course not. Um, don't know what's happening with these bots now. Oh, is the storage full? No. That's kind of weird. Um, I would like... I would like to send all four of the construction ships to one location at once. So that I don't have to remember several different things that are going on at the same time. Um, in terms of... What we're doing for building out solar panels to support the anchors. Uh, speaking of anchors, let's make a few more. Uh, we've made two, so six to go. Oh no. We overflowed somehow. Well, that could be worse, I guess. Alright, you are also going to Vazanis. Vazanis. Uh, so, we've got three out of our four construction ships here just ready to go. That's good. I guess we'll kidnap a few of these bots. It's fine. And I'll send the one that is... Why are the bots doing this? Wait, how many do we have here? Well, there's your problem. Uh, I wonder if I could take some of these butts out. Um, yeah, that'll work.
And I don't suppose we can reach over here. Fix this up. I might have to... Uh, that might reach. Maybe. Yeah, 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 it's getting done. Oh, you, are you gonna... Wait, you're heading to the thing that you're deconstructing to get recharged? Well, that works out. That works out very well indeed. Can we stop shoving bots out now? Not quite yet. That is also... in need of a fix. Hey, Whiskers. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you don't... Are you kidding? What are you... Uh... Robots. Wait, did it go all the way over there to recharge to build this? Oh, that's just... I guess all the ports over here were taken for a second. I can only guess. Alright, finally picked that up. And we can get rid of this. And, okay, I have to watch out. Now that I've got the um, RoboPorts recharging the bots on these little... Uh, we've got like one little charger thing on these. Uh, I have to watch out for the bots using them at scale. Thought you'd be streaming Straya? Wait, what? Seems what every streamer is doing today? Streaming Straya? Stray. Oh, okay. I was going to say, what's happening in Australia that I didn't hear about? Are we on fire again? That's not scheduled till uh, a cup, uh, about five or six months from now. I wish I was joking. It's presently being deconstructed. Australia is being removed? Oh no. Uh, Kate, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Bodie, McFo uh, Bodie McBoatface, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. How far off are you from completing the game? Uh, we're basically just waiting on, uh, let's see, 12... 13 divided by about 2, uh, about 7,500 Deep Space Science Pack 4s, uh, which entails an awful lot of Naquatite being delivered. We are receiving it at a rate of... well, let's look at our consumption. Naquatite... Uh, we're consuming it at a rate of about 8.1k per minute. It's gotten a lot more consistent than we had it before. Uh, so I guess our ingots... Our ingots are a good indicator of how... Yeah, yeah, it's, it looks the exact same at ingot production over here. Uh, ingots are a good indicator of how consistently we're getting our Nacotite. Lucky today, our team gives you a... What? Seriously? You're coming into a stream where I casually get, like, 120 plus viewers regularly. Good job.
about him deed. Hmm. I don't think the, uh... I don't think the script that I've been procrastinating would have picked that up. I wonder how I could go about that. Maybe we could play with that on the uh, dev stream as well. Yeah, uh, I, I only ran it by probably a couple of people effectively on the Discord. Uh, but I wonder what you guys would think of... Uh, I forget what the category is called, but basically doing like some programming and uh, software development on stream. Someone mentioned... What was it? I want someone to make a COGS mod so that it's called COGS, not GEARS. Yeah, we could do that. That'd be a good way to get over the hurdle of just setting things up the first time. Uh, oh. Oh. Naquim Tesseracts go bro. Fantastic. Alright, let's grab these ones. That's two, three, four um, anchors worth of Tesseract we're going to take to the mall. Sounds good. Programming is background noise while programming. <laughs> nice. Morpheus out. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Although it's been so long since I did any programming, um, it's basically going to be me blundering through uh, setting certain things up for the first time, which is always the most fun part of programming. I don't know about you. Scratching your head and struggling to find the answers to just where this goes, where that goes, in order to simply get started. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if he still streams, but, uh, resetting used to stream Factorio debugging. That's kind of cool. Oh, and here's our cogs. When he got genuine questions, he'd take the time to explain. Nice. Uh, as far as I can remember, unless you count... Uh, programming a KSP script uh, for KOS, which automatically pilots your ships and stuff. Um, I was trying to... I, I mean, I was making good progress, but it was a lot of work. It was tricky. Um, I was trying to program a fly-by-wire system. Uh, if you're not familiar, that is basically... Uh... Think of how... Uh, think of how I just tell this spider to go over this way, and, like, a computer deals with all of the leg movements. Um, it's like that. But flying VTOLs in Kerbal Space Program is realistically difficult because... Uh, because it's actually simulating all the physics. Um... Very challenging to learn to fly VTOLs. Um, but I was building a system that would basically just translate, like, player input that's really easy, like it is in most video games, to fly a helicopter or something, um, into... Uh, into the complex inputs that would be required to fly a little drone, uh, drone around. Uh, and with Kerbal Operating System, you can have impossibly, literally impossibly precise, like, amounts of thrust. You, you, you can have a rocket engine just hovering on the spot uh, with no deviation. Um because it can cr control the thrust input so precisely. That'd be great if you could pull it off. Yeah, definitely. 
Uh, but yeah, it's been a while. Uh, the other thing I can remember making was a mod for, uh, what is it called? I, I keep wanting to say, say like, Stardust, Stardew, that's not right. Um, the one that was like, two-dimensional... Uh, I don't want to call it like Terraria in space, but I'm just trying to think of the lowest common denominator kind of way to quickly explain it. Except you start, a, except you could fly all over the place, start with a ship. It was probably star something. Starbound, there we go. Yeah, I made a mod for Starbound that was supposed to just be... But basically, I just made it for myself, and I uploaded it so my friends could use it if they wanted. Next thing I knew, I had tens of thousands of people appreciating it and demanding updates. Starbound, yes. What are the chances when you finally succeed Kerbal 2 comes out with the same feature in vanilla? Uh... Don't worry, Kerbal Space Program 2 will never come out. I hope that is a joke. Yeah. Uh, Alright, let's get rid of these extra little blueprint things. No good turn goes unpunished. Oh no. Yeah, it was... Uh, I mean, you kind of, just be aware you, you're going to sort of implicitly sign yourself up for, for doing free maintenance um, indefinitely with something like that. It was kind of nice, uh, but also a little annoying sometimes, like every, I don't know, few weeks or month or month or two or something. I would have a Steam message, or, or, or like a, a notification on Steam that came came from the mod, and it's like, okay, is this going to be, this mod is great, thank you so much, or is it going to be, please fix, or please make it compatible with this other mod you've never heard of? I just hope they take as long as they need, rather than put it out half-baked. Yeah, that's true. Um, alright, where's our other construction ship? Kinda got a little sidetracked. Cool, that part's done. And as soon as it picks up this one... Now we'll send this back to Nervous Orbit and then... Send it over to Vazanus. They've been talking about adding multiplayer as well. Not really sure how that would work out. It would be... Yeah, I don't know where you'd start. Um, considering the way that... Well, no, I guess that's not that much of an impediment to it. I was thinking about how in Kerbal Space Program... Things are on rails if you're not there. I mean, that was actually kind of the whole reason, not the whole reason, but that's like one of the biggest reasons why specifically multiplayer would be good. Um, if you wanted to do like the recoverable rocket system thing. Excuse me. For example, if you wanted to launch boosters that fly back to the Kerbal Space Center um, after they disconnect from um, the main body of the spacecraft, uh, you couldn't really be in two places at once to pilot them. Um, and the boosters or the spaceship would sort of continue on, on rails. Although you couldn't, you couldn't leave something on rails if it was in atmosphere as well. Um, and that also made it rather difficult to play around with ideas like 
uh, mid-air docking. Of course. Would have to be locked to one time scale. Yeah, or, yeah, everyone would have to, like, there would have to be, like, admin privileges, or everyone would have to agree to, um, to when time is going to be accelerated. Alright, um, I guess I... I was going to say I'm also going to Vazanis, but surely we could just put the anchor in one of the ships. So once that ship gets back here... Wait, am I carrying the anchor? I'm sure I'm carrying the anchor. I am not carrying the anchor. Whoops. Um, let's not step... Th oh, we're already in this robot network. Get out, get out, get out. Okay. Set up a schedule for time adjustments, yeah. I hope they include a bunch of stuff that was basically, um... Like, required mods. Um, I think Kerbal Alarm Clock, if I recall correctly, may have ended up being such a thing where, like, it used to be a mod, or it probably still is a mod, but they basically added some of that functionality to the base game. Uh, Kerbal Engineer that actually shows you the stats that you really do need, unless you want to do the math yourself. Um... I mean, the vanilla game not telling you the Delta V of your spacecraft. Uh, that was a bit harsh. Alright, so there's our anchor. Uh, but yeah, I haven't really done coding for quite a while. It is always quite the misadventure just trying to set up the environment in the first place. Can't imagine they won't add that to the base game. I hope so. How's our antimatter stream looking now? Oh, very, very, very good. Alright, cool, we're way ahead of it. Fantastic. Uh, I forgot as well, we still need to go to... We still need to bring a lot of stuff to Foenestra. Then again, that's the whole reason we're making all these solar panels. Uh, so we've got... Seven. Seven more anchors... Uh, to go and put out there. Where's our construction ship? ETA, 10 seconds. Fantastic. I just realized it's going to go over here. And... Well, I, I guess I'm just going to manually put the anchor in. Alright, how about our ships on the way to Vazanus? That is not our construction ship. Wait, they're all still in Calidus? Hold on. No, are they already there? Oh, wow. Okay, that's that's good. Uh, let's measure... We need 5 times 4. We can actually kind of mostly fit that without slamming into this. And I'm going to delete all of this. 
before the construction ship actually anchors here, but now we've got a clear view of where we need to go. Uh, I think what I'll do is have them anchor up here. We'll do this version, and then we'll like trim it back once it's all done. Um, all right, so in that case, whoops, whoops, whoops. For Zanas. Wait, what? Oh, is this missing? Hold on. No? How did... Uh... Oh, this is down a bit. Okay. Whatever, it's fine. It's not going to actually affect anything in the end. Um... I'm sure we can actually... No, 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 before I do that. So this is, this is just to measure where we're going to put this. And then we need some 4x4. This is where we're going to put our superchargers. And we're going to build those first. So that we don't get a million bots waiting to recharge. That's a good start. Uh, let's give that some power. And then this version. Oh, wait, what? Oh, no. Oh, we can fix that in post. That's fine. So was that why that wasn't lining up before? Yeah. Alright, cool. Uh, we do still have room... ...to squeeze in some... Superchargers up here. So that's still going to happen, no matter what we do. Uh, could be worse is what I would say, but even though we've got a million bots ready over here, um, these specific ones are assigned to drop off this scaffolding, so I have to intervene manually like this. So that we can hurry up and place some more. He's a Pulsniak. 
good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, let's just do this like so. And actually, that's probably a terrible idea. Hello, what are we working on? We are working on uh, 20 blocks of 255 solar panels at each uh, seven more suns because we need eight of these ridiculously overpriced power-wise anchor things. Um, they each consume 60 gigawatts continuously. Uh, we have to build, we can only build one at each, we can only build one per surface and we have to build them at a star. Um, and we need eight of these things. I hope they don't have to be anywhere specific. Um, but to support the giant wedding ring, it turns out that this thing right here, uh, okay, I'm trying to highlight it, but there's like scaffolding hidden behind here. Um, this little target thingy, uh, the lights go green when we have anchors. Or rather, no, this one does. When we activate these things, that's what triggers the last part. So we need like at least 90 gigawatts to support this. Um, this reactor, slightly imperfect as it is, I'm pretty sure supports almost 24 gigawatts consistently. Uh, so we're going to need four, four reactors like this with um, 16 antimatter reactors each. And we're going to need um, 2,550 uh, flat solar panel Mark IIs at eight different stars and eight anchors at those stars just to fire this thing up properly. They don't need any specific solar. Okay, cool. Noxyway Gaming, good to see you again. Oh, well. Welcome. I hope you're doing well. All right, let's jam this in here somewhere. Can I just get in here? There we go. Uh, and we're sending this to Bozanus. Um, fortunately, Fortunately, the four updated construction ships that I have with antimatter engines happen to carry just enough to get one of these stars sorted out in one go. Unfortunately... Because I arranged it, uh, because I changed the settings so that uh, radar construction pylons do have recharge ports, uh, just one little recharge port each, we actually get a queue of like, what, 30 bots around each of these? I do wish, uh, I'm guessing it's not possible to configure it uh, in any way, like even if you open up the mod code. Um, it'd be good if this one little recharge port right here could only have, like, four bots queuing for it. Time to use ArcoLink. Uh, ArcoLink is incredibly expensive. Actually, well, it's only another 15,000. Yeah, th this would... If we research this, this would double the amount of Deep Space Science Pack 4s that we need from this point to finish the game. Uh, that's a little, that's a little bit steep. Um, yeah, the arbitrary scale of how much Naquitite it takes to... 
finish the game and play with the really, really late end game stuff. Um, I can't say I'm overly impressed with. It's like, uh, what is it? Uh, what is the setting called? Um, one of the difficulty settings for Factorio literally just makes the recipes more expensive. Um, obviously, that would change the look of certain builds with uh, bottlenecks like um, inserters and belts and things. But other than that, I, I don't find that to be a particularly interesting challenge. Just waiting longer for resources or making more mines. Instantaneous transport between two points anywhere. Yeah, but like like I said, from the, from where we are now, uh, it would literally double how long it takes to to end the game if we're going to do that as well. My clat is playing a C times ten research cost. I to each their own, but I don't see why you would do that. Um, all right. He needed a challenge. <laughs> Is SE not enough of a challenge? Uh, like, I like the complexity of SE, uh, if we're talking about a challenge. Um, I like dealing with all of these complicated recipes that have their side outputs. I like arcospheres. I like, uh, like all of these, where's that sushi? I like all of these recipes having, like, their own inputs as... Not random, it's it's actually precise, the percentages. Uh, like, they have their own inputs as outputs that you have to deal with. Uh, all of that stuff was kind of fun. I guess it is an attempt to ensure that players fully automate the last sciences, too. Yeah, but it doesn't take much to go beyond the scale of um, it being a pain to, like... Well, you can also just make it so you can't, like, handcraft things, for one thing. Um, but supposing you just slap down... You know, slap down some research machines and stuff somewhere. Uh, like I would probably do with Space Rail next time because it only takes uh, 50 energy science packs. Uh, instead of building out the entire production chain to make this happen automatically, I would probably slap something together here and like manually move things around uh, to get this unlocked. Um, obviously, you can make the cost of it high enough to to make that too much of a pain pretty easily. But, like, the sheer cost of a Deep Space Science Pack 4 in Naquatite and the tiny, tiny stack size for Naquatite and the fact that you have to go to... I mean, combined with the fact that you have to go to these uh, asteroid fields to get them... It all, it all just adds up to, um, I may as well run the game while I'm not playing it. I am the Sky. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How's Fo and Estra doing? Did I miss anything with that? Uh, not a whole lot. Um, we've got a big juicy power plant that, uh, theoretically we only need four of. Um to run Foenestra even after we power everything up because this uh, 10 gigawatts here is a bold-faced lie. It's actually 10 gigawatts plus 10 gigawatts plus 10 gigawatts plus 10 gigawatts and that's what we know of. So 90 gigawatts minimum that we need to run Foenestra. Um, we also need, as it turns out, eight anchors at different stars, um, and to support that we need about 25,500 uh, solar panels at each of these stars. 
So that's what we're working on right now. Um, and basically lining it up so that we're sending all four of our construction ships to each star each time so that they can do it all in one trip. There's a bit of a laggard somewhere here. Um, because it was doing something else. But that's not going to have a huge impact on how long it takes. I keep restarting SE, my playthrough, my SE playthrough so I can learn more and more and hate my factory. Yeah, that's understandable. I mean, there's there's a lot that I've learned this playthrough and a lot that I would do differently, of course. And that's besides just trying to keep the UPS higher from day one. Um, really happy with what I've learned with LTN and uh, a few other things. Um... I think next time I will not go for Omni Smelters. They are cool, but I really do appreciate, for example, being able to see exactly how we're doing with keeping up our Naquium processing. If Whenever there's a dip in this, um, we know that we are falling a little bit behind what should be our bottleneck, or, or what we're aiming to be our bottleneck for Naquitite. Or if this was, you know, a perfectly flat line for hours and we still didn't have enough Naquitite, we'd know for a fact that we just need more mines. But with, um, with Omni Smelters... You know, all of our all all of our uh, electronically managed stuff that we're smelting looks very very spiky. So it's a lot harder to know where we stand. Um, of course, if you want to go really pedantic, uh, or if you're like building a mega base, you could literally put every resource that's going to be consumed and produced into the factory planner to begin with uh, and have precisely what you need. Uh, I think literally just the design part, as in not designing blocks or anything, but like designing the count for each machine <laughs> If you were to just, if you were to go through that for the whole of space exploration, that alone would probably take I don't know hours, definitely hours, but I don't know how many hours. What's the main advantage of Omni smelters? Is it just less machines in total? It is less machines in total, um, and you can also just you know, hey, we need more smelters. Copy paste done. We don't have to worry about, do we have enough iron smelters? Do we have enough copper smelters? We don't have idle machines nearly as much. Um, but at this scale, the UPS cost from the crafting combinators is not insignificant. Uh, I think... I know it's not free to have, like machines sitting idle like these uh 320 oh that's right were we didn't we make a new block for this uh hold on i'm sure we made a new block is this it yes 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 and it's totally saturated okay cool uh i forgot to add these icons here Let's go plate and gutter and we can retire this old block. Uh, now I'm sure when everything's completely saturated and nothing is happening here, this is not costing a whole lot of UPS. 
but it's non-zero per entity, right? Uh, I would imagine. And we've got 320 machines here. Um, if we're not using Omni Smelters, we will have a lot of... A, a lot more idle furnaces all the time. But given... Uh, given the UPS cost of running, like, the crafting combinators, the bots, especially. We kind of have to use bots after a certain scale. Um, you probably, probably break even, or, or maybe it's even an improvement. Crafting combinator is... where is it? down the bottom there. It's actually only 0.4 as opposed to 6.9 for circuit networks in general. It's up to 0.5 now, 0.55 maybe. No, okay, Crafting Combinator is actually a lot UPS cheaper than... I mean, I didn't think it was particularly UPS expensive, but we've got a lot of them. Uh, but yeah, that is actually pretty, pretty negligible overall. Uh, it is one-tenth of, it's a, it's a tenth of a quarter of everything that's slowing us down. Electric network 8.5, indeed. Yeah, that is... You wouldn't think electricity would be so difficult to calculate. I, I find that pretty counterintuitive. Um, I think it's because of all our spaceships, for the most part. I, I do have a bunch of stuff that I would have done differently if I'd known that just having power poles that are disconnected from the electricity network, apparently it makes it its own electricity network even if it's not connected to anything, uh, and that's going to have a, a slight impact. So we've got a lot of power poles that are that are there just for circuit wire and stuff. Um, so I could definitely do that differently. What is your PC spec? Uh, here it is. Never managed to dip below 60, even in SE? How do you... M how do you not manage to do that? Um... Like, this is... This is just how stuff grows. Alright, are you almost at your destination? Two and a half minutes, that's probably fine. It's not like I'm gonna finish... Everything else we're doing in Vazanus in two and a half minutes. Alright. Let's build this here. I thought I heard something get placed. It was probably a bot. No, that's a different sound. My builds aren't big enough for that, I guess. My PC is most definitely weaker than that. Okay. Also, I don't use logistics mods, LTN. I don't think LTN is that impactful. Crafting combinators, yeah. Uh, LTN, we, bear in mind, we have like 2,000... Almost literally 2,000 LTN stations. Um, and the, the LTN time is... That's LTN screensaver. Uh, where is it? It's less than one. So it's less than a seventh of what we're spending on circuit networks. Power poles that aren't connected to power lines. Uh, just circuits cost UPS. Well, ouch. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of little well-ouch things. Uh, 
I, I, I need to be able to confirm all of these things that I'm told about UPS, like, empirically. But that aside, there's a lot of little things that that are well ouch when you find out what does or doesn't cost UPS. Oh, I mean, everything costs UPS, but there, there's things that are more efficient. Just angering a lot of biters by expanding your pollution cloud in the area where nests are touching is another massive drop. Yeah, I'm actually really surprised at how UPS expensive biters are. I have seen what happens if you add a signal to your rails. Maybe it's the rails in general, since I'm not... Uh, currently not using blocks, but more of a modular rail system. Well, the reason it does that, whenever I change a signal is because apparently it forces every single train in the game to repath whenever a rail signal is added or removed. Um, it's pretty impressive when you think about it that the thousands, literally thousands of trains that we've got all just repathed whenever, whenever I mark this for deconstruction or cancel the deconstruction literally every train in the game just repathed that's impressive um but for one thing why are they all having to repath just because of that but yeah um if we look at the cost of trains right now is that pathfinder or is that something else uh trains let's see Oh, there's our research. I mean, it doesn't really make a difference. We've technically unlocked um, Spaceship Victory, but I wasn't... I, I, I would be extremely impressed if anyone could get a Victory Spaceship down to 2500 hull stress. So we're still two researchers away from actually spaceship victory um but we can oh is this not in the rail network uh not rail network the robot network let's put this here and handily enough uh i guess i'll change that to a buffer chest yeah, I'll just change this to a buffer. And... I was going to say when we're ready, we'll request interstellar travel data over here, but it's actually really easy to get. In terms of resource throughput, interstellar travel data is by far the cheapest of the final tier of data cards. Spaceship 4 is ticking along pretty quickly. Yeah, but that was consuming uh, what was left of a delivery by train um, of Deep Space Science Pack 4s. Um, I could, if I really want to, uh, calculate roughly how much more we need to finish this research and then bump up the provide stack threshold here. And then we're going to get nothing happening with our research until all of a sudden it's just gonna it's just gonna fly through to the very end of the game i did my spaceship victory with 3.5k i think i can do it with 3k with higher laser damage really so what you just don't have shield projectors or You'd have to go pretty high on laser damage. What tier of science pack do we need for laser damage? Does it just stay at tier 1? It does. Okay. So 51k sounds like... Uh, sounds like a lot. But 25k laser uh, deep space pack 1 sounds like a lot. But it's kind of... Isn't it like exponential... 
a little bit how how much more the next tier of deep space science costs. Three laser shielding, three laser shield projector. So like one layer of shields. Three layer of shield projector. So how are you, how are you dropping this by another 500? I was pleasantly surprised at how much hull stress we recovered just by making gaps here, but Another 500 seems like a tall order. Uh, let's check in on Vazanus. Oh, our ship is not... Oh, timing. Alright, cool. And... Continue down this path. The secret is how you array your engine so they all function at 100%. So you're telling me we can do better than this? I thought this was as compact as we could get with max engine efficiency. I guess I could have these uh, pipes be asymmetrical and we could save like one tile of, uh, I guess that adds up. We've got like one, two, three, four, five, ten. If we could save like ten tiles of hull in here. But this is basically it, right? How many engines did you have? I guess. I guess if you had the hull stress down to 3,000, was it? Oh wait, you said 3.5k. Hold on. I did my spaceship victory with 3.5k. Oh, that's what we've got. Okay. Yeah, no, I thought you were saying you had it all the way down to 3k or even 2,500. Uh, 2, that would be... I would be incredibly impressed if someone could pull off 2,500. I don't know. I don't think that's possible. I've seen victory ships that have engines in holes in the ship. Would that work? It makes them less efficient. Um, I was actually... The first design that I threw together... This is it. No, this is not it. But it was very similar to this. It was like this, but longer, kind of. Uh, and maybe a bit wider. Um, uh, and I thought, okay, we don't have enough engines. Uh, like, imagine this, but with seven um, uh, high-temperature turbine generators. Um, and then it turns out we don't have enough engine power to reach the top speed. So how do we add, like, I don't know, six to eight engines? Um, well, what if we put some up here, kind of? Uh, it, I think we already had it sticking out this way a bit. Um, but yeah, I tried putting engines up on the sides, uh, and they had, like, 64% efficiency. Because there were... Like, if I put an engine here it wouldn't have max efficiency. With that gap, they shouldn't impact the engines in front that much. Uh, so if I have an engine like here, as opposed to here, you're telling me it'll be more efficient? That opens up some possibilities, I suppose. Uh, let's check in on Vazanus, and I guess there's no need to put the anchor down until we're ready. Uh, 
That is quite the butt halo. I should change this, um... Oh, right, I forgot. There's a reason there's a radar construction pylon here. Hmm... I should probably just... put more superchargers in. Turn that into a pylon substation. And then... Screw it. We're gonna go supercharger like this. And then select new contents. Uh, how many is this? 16. 16. Should be 255 minus 4. Alright. So that's going to be our template for uh, temporarily having some bot charging ports while we build these. From this point on. And I'll leave that one. I'm not too worried about that for now. Alright, so change that back. Just give them a minute to fill this out. Oh, they're even crowding around these ones. Hey, Veldak. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It seems like they prefer to go to the radar construction pylons, but I know that's just because we don't even see them stopping at the superchargers. All right, fine. Why don't we... Why don't we get rid of all of them? For the moment. Not just for the moment. Let's stop using the radar construction pylons for this. With superchargers in place, wouldn't regular pylon substations be preferable? Yep. Absolutely. Millenarian? Good to see you again, by the way. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I don't know if I said hello, Midden. Welcome, welcome also. And I feel like... Uh, also, 87... Quetiad 8 from 5 Verdurka. Yes. Welcome, welcome also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought so. I read your comment earlier, but I forgot to say hello. Uh, did I miss anyone else in the chat? Sheep say meh. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Seen victory ships that have engines and hulls in the ship. Yes, yes, yes. And the Glacier Wolf. Welcome, welcome also. Good to see you again. Using 30 engines for victory ship, how about yours? Uh, let's see. We have 28. Pretty close. Uh, this does go... I don't know how fast it goes, actually. Because we haven't changed... I don't think we've changed the engines since it was... 3770 hull stress. 
So it wouldn't shock me if we could actually remove two of these engines. But it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if we have to keep all of these engines though. I think we're probably going to get like 254, 258 max speed. Fat boy not so slim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I had nothing but issues with my solar fields. Bots just didn't want to build. Maybe I didn't give them charging. Oh well, stupid bots. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, yeah, y y you have to... At first glance... Um, why don't we just remove... Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's remove those for now. Except not the solar panels, actually. Well, not these solar panels. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. It's so much easier to just to put more superchargers in. Temporarily. It will be a bit more of a pain to clean up after we're done, but getting there is the majority of the effort. Alright, and then this one. And then we get our new temp blueprint. Alright, that should be a lot smoother. Are you going for a spaceship or Phonestra slash Stargate victory? Yes. Uh, spaceship victory is what I'm going to go for first. We've, we've literally already done everything. We're just waiting on the rest of the research. Uh, so that is about eight, nine thousand Deep Space Science Pack 4s. Uh, cut it in half because of productivity modules. And we'll be done. And I think after that we might play with teleportation. So Foenestra is a victory condition. I mean, I would hope so, considering everything it takes to get it going. Um, I guess it's literally just cut, uh, using Foenestra as a stop-off point is how you can use it for a shortcut, which isn't that bad. I, I probably will. I don't know, we have to we have to unlock it with zone discovery or something, right? So we have to just spam a bunch of it's actually only Astro Science Pack ones. We could get it relatively early in a future playthrough. And then How much Delta V does it take? Let's see. If we take the bullet ship Oh, and Estra, does it tell us? No, no, no. How about... Oh, and Estra. That's a spaceship. Oh, and Estra. Delta V from Nervous Orbit. 18,155. That is actually really, really significantly less than I thought it would be. Um, what about from Nalvis? I assume that takes into account... 1,800... 18,255? Really? Uh, Nalvis Orbit. Onestra. That doesn't seem right. Delta V from Nalvis to... Nervous Orbit. 
it says it's a hundred. I guess that just doesn't include the cost of taking off. It's literally just like the delta V of the 10 second journey after taking off. I would assume so if it's not, if it's, so if it's not, that's kind of, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's a victory condition, just presuming. Have to go AFK, take care, fat boy. thanks for hanging out. I'll wish you luck and check out the VOD, cheers. I, uh, I am the sky, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Does making your ships faster slash reducing delta V costs actually help you out? Uh, yeah, you can't really reduce delta V costs. Um, uh, that's not how that works, but... Well, I mean, you can't change what a journey costs delta V-wise, but you can change the journey. Aren't your bottlenecks just on either end anyway? Uh, yes and no. The further we have to go for this Naquitite, for example, the more ships it takes to keep up with a certain rate of mining. So, let's see, Stardust from, well, I guess from Nalvis, oh, I was going to say from Nalvis Orbit, but that's not right. Stardust, which is where we get almost all of our Naquitite, is 64,500. So, uh, if we go to Foenestra, uh, the way I think it works is, well, let's check, actually. Let's look at Stardust. And then, from here, we look at Foenestra. I think Foenestra is the same... 10,000. Hmm. Okay. Alvis Orbit. Alvinestra. 18,155. What about from here? Oh, what? it's fine. 16,833. Uh, how about one of the furthest stars we can pick out from this place? Bonestra is 19,000. So it's not the same distance from all locations, but I guess you can think of it as it squishes space. Um... Kind of like traveling through hyperspace in Star... What was it called? Star Control 2? A little bit like that, I guess. Uh, but yeah. Um, uh, I can hardly be bothered at this point, but it would be well worth programming a stop-off at Foenestra. How would we do it with all of, without making another one at each... Here comes the final research. Nice. So if we send these ships to Foen from Nalvis to Foenestra to Stardust to Foenestra to Nalvis, um, it's actually going to be a much shorter journey. And that's true of almost every destination, honestly. Um, one of the earliest uh, regular routes that we got was coming to Morpheus. Um, let's see, Delta V from Nalvis Orbit to Morpheus is 50k. And if we go, if we use Foenestra, Foenestra as a stop-off point, um, we're significantly below 40k. No matter where we're going. So, in a future playthrough, I think it would be wise to spam uh, 
spam research until we find phone astra is it just research like can we just spam zone discovery like as soon as we've got it to find phone astra i'm not sure um but yeah i i would like to do it without having to add a different spaceship clamp for each destination at Foenestra. How would we do this? I think no matter... Hmm. This would be a really good excuse. This would be a really good reason to make a dispatching system. So imagine our ships... Well, we'll have space elevators. Imagine our ships drop off uh, resources at Nalva's orbit. No matter what resource they're dropping off, they go back to Foenestra. Foenestra sends them to pick up resources from various places, depending on what. If we if we keep it simple, each ship can be assigned to a different resource uh, to a different location and or resource. So depending on like a signal from in the ship, uh, it can send it to one place or another. Uh, what would be better is... There is one problem with this. Oh, I guess it's not that big of a problem. Um, it'd be a bit of a pain early on in the game to have power here relatively early on, but we don't have to have enough power to run the Stargate. We could just use nuclear power. Uh, so we have a whole bunch of uh, signal receivers here. We have the outposts transmitting how much they've got available for pickup. We have plenty of storage at each outpost. And then we need a system to prioritize uh, which outpost we should send a ship to. And then the problem is there's a delayed uh, there's a delayed response. So if outpost X has a bunch of resources, and we send the next ship to Outpost X. Then the next ship comes here, it needs to be dispatched. We need to, like, remember that we sent a ship to Outpost X. Not just keep sending ships to Outpost X until it's full. Alternatively, we could just have everything on a rotation and send ships equally to each outpost. I don't think that would be very good. You need an LTN space connector? Yeah, that's what we'd have to design to really take advantage of Foenestra. I'm actually kind of really interested in this problem now. I could even see myself uh, designing it in... Um, designing it to the fullest in editor extensions before we start our next playthrough. I'd really like to, like, standardize a ship design. Um, not just standardize a ship design, but we could have, like, an upgrade path all the way through different technology levels. Um, I don't think I've blueprinted those yet, but I did design them in our editor extensions game. So based on various milestones of which, uh which type of research packs we've unlocked. There's various ship designs that all fit in the same uh, clamp stations. And that all have the same, like, refueling pipe setup. Yeah, we could, we could cut down... It would be a really... A really complex system to build. Um, and we could cut down enormously 
on the travel time and fuel required. Add to that the fact that we've got space elevators, so we don't have to pay the fuel to take off from uh, from a planet. Uh, and despite having much smaller stack sizes and stuff, I think on the next playthrough we're going to be way, 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 way better off logistically between planets. Is your next SE playthrough going to be with K2? Uh, yes, I think I will. Um, I have been sort of mulling it over a bit, uh, and I'm definitely leaning pretty heavily towards K2, just so that... A, for a couple of reasons, but mainly so that a significant amount of it is going to be new. Just use Arcoon. <laughs> and you only need one spaceship. Yeah, um... <laughs> Just use the technology that you need to have been able to finish the game the whole time. Easy. Um, yeah, I think... I think even, uh, like, right after I finish this playthrough, I'll jump into editor extensions. Uh, I, th I, I might have to... I might have to really think about how I'm going to do this. Like, the Omni Smelter wasn't thought up in a day, right? Um, it, it was a long and continuous process, partly because I was, like, learning how to think with circuits in this game. But, like, there were many iterative steps to get to where I am now with um, with my ability to design those Omni Smelters or other complicated circuits that I use. Um, I, I think it's going to take an amount of time just thinking before I'm really ready to try and build something like a dispatching system. Oni on the way? Yes, indeed. I'm actually really looking forward to breaking through the mid-game of Oxygen Not Included. And being able to use chat if I get really stuck. K2 helps a ton in the late game? Oh, I can imagine. The advanced production structures cut the amount of buildings, or at least, at least by a factor of 10. That's really, really going to help with the UPS. Yeah, I, I really like how... I mean, we haven't even built the White Area Beacon 2s or the Beyond Tier 6 modules, but um, I like that we can really reduce... I, I, I would love to have manufactories like this on the ground, just one machine ridiculously fast, so we could really cut down on UPS uh, for the late game builds. It sounds like K2 might have something like that. You have to add a ton somewhere else. Include large storage mods too. Yes, I'm definitely going to do that. I was considering it um, early on in this playthrough, but I wanted as much as possible to look vanilla and be recognizable and like for a relatively new player to be able to look at that and go, oh, okay as opposed to just the entire thing looking completely foreign. We're already 17% of the way done. This is accelerating. Uh, significantly more than I expected. Uh, speaking of which, let's continue with Vazanis. At this rate... At this rate, we're actually going to have the spaceship victory significantly before I can get the, uh, significantly before I can get the anchors powered. I guess if we're doing these quad charger layouts, um, which we just barely need more than one of per block, with the length of these things. Uh, I guess with the quad charger layouts, we can be a bit more reckless in terms of just putting down lots and lots of uh, blueprints as well. 
because the bots have no trouble whatsoever recharging. Are you going to get that far? Oh yeah, you're fine. Oh, that might actually mean that we don't need any more charges here already. We can stop putting charges here and just do the final version down this way. A nice part about K2IMHO is the combat overhaul. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, I've played with it a bit, actually. The the way that bullets are actually uh, simulated, for example, as opposed to just a hit scan. Also, artillery with nukes. Yikes. I need to get a, a mod that um, gets rid of the big black nasty scorch marks. I don't like those. I would use nukes a lot more, if not for that. Um... And yeah, the uh, the energy shields blocking projectiles, that's pretty cool. Although, by the time we have energy shields, we should have our planets cleared anyway. Uh, let's see, energy beaming? Uh oh. Uh, energy beaming. Is... Tier 3 of everything but bio. And... That's not that advanced. Uh, energy shield. No, what is it called? Projector. Shield projector... 3, 4, and 1. So, you've probably got energy beaming before you've got shield projectors. So, like, uh, being able to block Biter's projectiles is not that exciting at that point, because you're probably just scorching them to get rid of them. Uh, Omeg X, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Need lawnmowers and pressure washers. Lawnmowers and pressure washers. That actually reminded me of the... What are the bots doing? Uh-oh. Uh, I think I confused them. Too many ghosts, so they take a lot longer to think about it. Is that what's happening here? Also, why don't these have power... We can't be out of pylon substations. What the hell? We've got 774 pylon substations. What's going on here? Uh, hello? Oh, those are not ghosts. Actually, some of them are. Robots. Alright, let's just remove all of these ghosts. Sometimes when there's ghosts, when there's too many ghosts or upgrade planners or something, the bots can be really, really slow to react. And they come in big waves, but this doesn't seem to be that. Oh, maybe it was. Why is there only... Oh, there's like a few of them. Substations don't have building area, do they? You'd need construction pylons, radar pylons, or... Oh, right. Yeah, but they weren't... Yeah, no, I think... I think you're right. No, they should have built these ones. Or not, actually. 
Yeah, my bad. Okay, so if I do it like... If I do it like this, we can easily remove them later. But then... Hmm. Yeah, no, I think this is the way I want to do it. Because I want to keep the uh, radar construction pylons on the opposite side. So that the bots don't use them to recharge. I guess if I had the radar construction pylons in here. Uh, because of because they're surrounded by superchargers, they probably wouldn't use those much? Question mark? I'm sure they probably would. Alright, um, let's try this again. I suppose there's no harm in putting this out here ahead of time. Whoops. And down here as well. Really? Okay. I guess that's not a huge fraction of the bots that are working here. I do wish we could really automate this where I could just stamp down everything that's supposed to be here and expect it to get done in a reasonable amount of time. I'll just wait till these two blocks are done, and then I'll lay out these scaffolding. Would it be worth it to relaunch the game with the charging points turned off? Or would it mess up your builds everywhere? Uh, some builds that would mess up, but nothing too serious. Also, I'd have to go through the process of, like, mod syncing... Restarting. It, it, it's a bit lengthy still. Even though we finished uh, clearing out those spider planets. Oh, there it is. Alright, I think that'll be enough for now. Where is it? Get rid of that. Alright, so what else are we doing? Good question. I could think a little bit more on... I guess we could try to design the dispatching system. We don't need ships actually running around or anything uh, to do that part. Alright. Let's build it up here. Maybe I've overthought it a little bit, because we can literally just use a counter to keep track of how many ships are on their way 
to a certain destination. But then how do we subtract from that counter when they're done? Uh, we subtract from it when the ship arrives. Yeah, even though the spaceship consoles are quite slow to react, uh, the circuits connected to the clamps will know immediately, like on, on tick number one, when a ship is or isn't here. So we can definitely count when ships arrive and leave. So, let's see. Um, we have... Uh, we've got a million power here, so I could actually put down transmitters and receivers and stuff to make it a bit easier to follow. Um, let's just go whoops, up here. So let's say I'll just worry about managing one outpost to start with. So this is, consider this part to be Foenestra. Uh, do we even need, yeah we do need a receiver. Do we need a transmitter? I don't think so. We could think of our transmitter as the spaceships itself. You know, the outposts don't need to receive information. They just need to send it. Okay. Um, so let's just call this outpost one. And... Uh, do I have a clamp? Yeah, I do. This is going to be where we tell our spaceship to go somewhere. Ideally, I would like... Hmm. I could have a single... Uh... It'd mean a few spaceships sitting idle. But it would be a lot simpler. If we have, like, one clamp outpost thing, if we have, like, one station sort of thing for each outpost. So, we have our one signal receiver pointed at that planet. We have a spaceship stops here. It's going to be, like, a generic spaceship that can be sent to any... Um, any destination. Unless we're going to have fluid versions as well, but that's easy enough. So, Outpost 1 is going to be telling us that it has X amount of core fragment, let's say, Holmanite. Um, when it has, when it's approaching having enough for, I could, I, we, we could just, it's a pretty short trip, we could just make it say that it has to have enough of the spaceship to pick it up, um, but we're gonna say, I guess I could do an any here, if anything greater than however many, well, what, let's see, let's say we go for, hmm, I was going to say, let's say we go for like 75 chests, but that's pretty late game, um, I guess in the long run it doesn't hurt if we've got extra fragments sitting in storage. Alternatively, we could look at the type, the, de uh, the design of spaceship that we've got parked here and set our threshold based on that. 
Hey, repetitive beats. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How does the requesting planet know when the supply ship is on the way? Uh, it doesn't have to. Has arrived and on its way back. Is there an interstellar logistics? Um, so what I've got in mind is... Imagine this is Foenestra. Ship comes here from, like, Nervous Orbit or wherever our main base of operations is. Uh, I was going to say we could make that Foenestra, but no, there's no planet next to Foenestra to take advantage of prod modules. Um, where was I? Uh, so we're going to... Once there's enough core fragments here for our biggest ship to pick up a load, uh, like the biggest ship we're ever going to make in the game, uh, once there's enough for that, we're going to dispatch a ship. Um, I don't know... Hmm... The distance is only, like, less than 20k, right, from Foenestra to anywhere else. Except with ion engines, that still takes some time. 10,000. Uh, why don't we pick a random planet orbit? No, I th yeah, no, 10,000 was lowballing it, right? Um, this star... Distance to Foenestra is 18,280. I haven't seen one of them go above 20k. But especially with ion ships, 20k still takes some time. So... That's actually a whole other ball game is like counting how many spaceships we need to send as the count of stored resources increases. Hmm. Uh, we can count the number of ships, or rather the capacity of the ships that have already been dispatched to that location and subtract it from how much that outpost has. So let's say our outpost has a max storage of 100k, um, and our ships can carry only a thousand, uh, and currently it's got like 7,000 available, just for argument's sake. We detect a ship here whenever it anchors and connects. Um, I guess we don't have to worry about detecting a ship here. But whenever we send a launch signal... Oh, that's kind of a problem. Because if we pulse a launch signal, it's not going to make the spaceship take off. Uh, it says it in the manual here somewhere. A spaceship console will not accept launch or speed signal inputs until a player is manual. That's not what I'm looking for. The console only checks for changes to the input signal every second. A sustained signal is required for the ship to react. Single tick pulses will not work. So it's not like I can just send tick of launch signal at the moment that I decide to send another, another ship and expect it to take off. So that's a whole other sub-problem to solve. But basically, when we launch a ship, we're going to subtract the capacity of that ship I guess instead of counting how many ships we're sending there, we're going to count um, 
we're going to count the max storage of the ships that we've been sending there. Um, so we're going to have a constant signal of what the outpost actually has. We're going to have a count of how much capacity we've sent there. And then, let's say on the red wire from this thing, we're going to receive when a ship departs from the outpost, how much storage capacity it has. Or rather, how much it is actually carrying with it, which is probably going to be the same thing. It could send an anti-signal? Pulse the launch signal and destination to a memory cell on the ship. Or a memory cell next to the ship, yeah. And then clear it immediately when it arrives at the next destination. Or clear it as soon as it takes off. Yeah, that, that part's like... For me, anyway, uh, pretty trivial, but I just want to, like, like a programming function, just mentally put that in a little box and set it aside for now. Um, so, yeah, at the destination, when a ship arrives, or rather when it departs, we're going to send back a signal on the red wire. So like, okay, green wire is going to be just how much we've got available in storage all the time. Uh, when a ship departs, I'm sure it's going to be pretty trivial to add something to a ship design so that we can just have a little identifier Probably just something on the constant combinator that goes to the console. Uh, we could have some signal here that just tells us storage capacity. I could do like steel chest signal, for example. We could just say how many chests it is or how many stacks. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So we'll have a signal that tells us how many stacks of storage the ship has. Um, when the ship departs... We, the moment of departure um, is something we'll have to have solved on both ends. That's not difficult, it's just the moment we stop receiving a signal from this. And then we can react to that. So, the moment the ship departs, um, so when the ship arrives, we have to put the storage capacity into a memory cell. It might be a little bit easier and functionally about the same to just send this the moment the ship arrives here and just assume that it'll leave fully stocked. But we ran into that whole rare problem of occasionally the bots won't put in, like, the last two resources or something into a chest. So I guess at the moment of departure we read exactly how much is in the ship. Uh, and we send that on the red wire back here, uh, and then subtract it from... Do we even need to do that? Yeah, we do. We, we subtract it up from, like, how much is on its way to that outpost. There's a few little tricky steps, uh, or little problems that have to be solved to get X or Y or Z bit of information. 
especially because of the not being able to pulse uh, spaceship launch into the ship, for example. But ultimately, ultimately we're just counting um, how much storage capacity has already been thrown at that outpost that's, that hasn't got there yet. This might not be as difficult as I thought. What about a priority system? I don't think we really can worry about a priority system. With the journeys being relatively short, um, it makes it a bit easier. I, I, I think we should literally just always make sure there's enough spaceships. Yeah, uh, the way I was thinking of doing this as well um, also would make a priority system more complicated. So basically, at Foenestra, um we'll have our generic ships come into copies of basically this uh, little dispatching system. But the dispatching system is linked to a specific outpost. So we're going to get an arbitrary order of spaceships uh, assigning themselves to different um, outposts. But if there's already enough ships that have been sent to an outpost, we're going to have one here just waiting to go. Yeah, I think uh, tentatively... Very much tentatively, I want to say this might be easier than I thought. I mean, it will be a complex system, but um, not as not as difficult as I imagined. All right, let's continue spamming solar panels and I think we can get rid of these now. Also, we can probably go ahead and replace some of these. As long as there's a path for the bots, it should be fine. a lot of bots in flight. The game is just slow enough that you can see that the bots do take a moment to recharge on the superchargers. Uh, let's add some scaffolding. Oh wait, I forgot. Uh, yeah, we can probably make the last block just our final product from the beginning. Uh, do we have... Yeah, that should be fine. In fact, I can probably skip those to begin with. goes kind of hard to see Yeah. 
And... Are we going to have any scaffolding left over, actually? We've got, like... 20 chests. 96,000. Uh, 4096, I think it is. Times 20. Oh yeah, we've got quite a bit left over. Let's put some scaffolding over here. It's a weird little gap. Actually, you know what? Fill that out. It's going to bother me. I won't worry too much about getting a few bots recharging over this way. Thirty-three percent of the way to factory spaceship five. Fantastic. All right, so maybe let's actually start fleshing this out a bit. Um. When a ship arrives at our clamp, anything greater than zero on this green wire or on the red wire. I guess the red wire would maybe be more reliable. Uh, so that's the console input. Actually, no, that's going to be connected to things over here as well. Alright, anything detected on the green wire means we have a ship here. Uh, do we need that on this end? I don't know. Definitely need it here. Uh, I guess... Oh, I know. So we'll use steel chest for our signal of how many stacks this ship has in it. Not how full it is, but its storage capacity. If steel chest is greater than zero, output steel chest input count. And then we have a pulse generator. I was going to blueprint that, but I can do it from memory and explain how that works. Um, we just hook up the input to both of these. Uh, one of them is going to say if... Oh, let's swap those around, actually. Uh, this one's going to be each greater than zero. Output each input count. So that's just going to pass anything positive through. And then one tick later, we want to stop doing that. So it takes zero ticks for information to travel across wire. It takes one tick for the combinator to do something and give an output. So one tick after the input goes into this arithmetic combinator, it's going to give an output to this one. And that's going to be each times negative one. Output each. Uh, and just because we're specifically doing this with steel chest we could make it very clear that this that's what this is for so uh, storage capacity goes to here passes through here one tick later and then one tick after that this has received a negative of whatever it was receiving uh, and it'll stop outputting so we're going to pulse that to here, uh, and that's on the red wire we're going to have... I guess I could just do it here as well. Uh, we're going to multiply that by negative one. Uh, how about red wire? 
All right, so the moment the spaceship arrives, we pass steel chest to here. I guess we don't need this combinator, actually, since we changed these to be specifically steel chest. So the moment a ship arrives, steel chest signal pulses through to here, multiplied by negative one, goes back to here, and then... Uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna have a memory cell here for how much, hmm, it might be easy to make this generic, so like, instead of receiving a signal of how much stuff we've got in storage, we receive a signal of how many stacks of, of stuff we've got in storage. So instead of just reading this directly, uh, we go arithmetic combinator. Um, let's say we've got Holmanite core fragments. Uh, Holmanite core fragments divided by whatever the stack size is. Currently it's 100. I understand it's going to be a lot less in the next patch. Output steel chest. So this is how many stacks of Holmanite core fragments we've got in storage in this place. Send that on the green wire. Um, so let's say we've got 1,000. We've got a thousand stacks of Holmanite core fragments waiting to be picked up. Uh, how do I account for... How do I account for if we're making more Holmanite than we're using? So that, what if, what if this is full? Our spaceships go back to Nalvis. And there's a queue at Nalvis. Does that mean we're going to just keep spending, uh, sending spaceships? Yeah, we can have an infinite number of spaceships queued at Nalvis waiting to drop off Holmanite. So I think in that case, we actually have to keep track of the ships that we're sending back to Nalvis as well. Oh no. I mean, it's doable. It's just... I wouldn't say it's doubled the complexity. Uh, I would just say that it's it's going to be more or less double what we were already going to build. But it's going to be like basically the same stuff, but again. Instead of sending storage capacity at uh, the outposts, we're going to be thinking of, of it as sending storage at... Alvis for various resources. Could you just request needed resources instead of dispatching based on how much is there? Yeah, we, we, we'd need to do a bit of both, I think. How much is there really ready to be delivered? Hmm... Do you ever really care how much is at your resource source? The ship will eventually fill and be sent back. Uh, I, th I think I do care. I think I basically want to make space LTN. 
uh, insofar as that's possible. Partly because it's cool. Ooh, we're at 50%. We're definitely getting spaceship victory done before we get our anchors. This, this one, this one's taking a bit longer than I thought it would. We're definitely going to be um, a bit faster next time, but we've got another six of these to go afterwards. What the? Well, that's a bunch of extra plot jobs. that aren't accomplishing anything. Some of our robot ports are overfilled as well, it looks like. No, definitely not. Oh no, they're recharging down here. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, there's a reason to not remove those superchargers prematurely. How's the space boss building? Which anchor is this? Uh, this is Vazanus, which is our nearest star. Uh, apart from our home star of Calidus. You can disable radar charging in mods. Yeah, but we have to restart the game to do that. Maholic, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So... Maybe we could even... It would be very cool if we could make a depot that's like... That can send to any of the outposts. Just like LTN. But... The way it would have to pick out one spaceship... Yeah, no, I, I think it would be better if we just have one... One depot for each outpost. Game crashes slash save corrupted... Wait, what? Try it while playing? No, thank you. Mine flicked off in the game, really. Uh, Alright, it's actually been almost two and a half hours. I think now's a good time for a break. I think I'm mentally running out of a little bit of steam trying to think about these circuits as well for a second, so we'll slow down on that. Uh, let's get some words on stream together. And... Get that onto the stream. Are we on the screensaver? Fantastic. Why can't I alt tab? There we go. You just need to add more anchor on the spaceship. More anchor on the spaceship. Do you mean like two clamps? All right. I think I should blank my mind on that for a few minutes, at least. Alright, in about 30 seconds, we're going to do some words on stream. I'll be back in a few minutes or so. Good luck and have fun.
Okay, let's continue, shall we? Uh, back to space exploration. Uh, where are we up to? Let's see how Vazanis is doing. Screensaver off. Oh, it... Hmm, I guess I'm not shocked that this isn't finished, but... It's getting there. What, he took it down? I mean, yeah, I was gone for like five minutes. Did we want more words on stream? Is that how it is? Wait. No, it definitely finished. Yeah. I didn't interrupt the last one. Sometimes uh, looking at the browser and looking at what is shown on stream, it's a bit out of sync, but uh, never the actual you finished the level part. Words on stream is the true content we're here for? Oh no. This is a words on stream stream now? Maybe we should do a words on stream stream sometimes. Uh... Alright, I, I kind of want to continue this, but I sort of need a little bit of a mental break from it. What else can we do in the meantime? Um... We're kind of just spamming solo for the anchors. Oh, I was thinking earlier about how I could redesign this. So... We need to... We'd have to use a timer, but we could have a lot more chests for inserting to the train. Let's pretend it's just a... Uh, well, for now, imagine it's just a uh, one cargo wagon. Actually, don't do that at all. So I'm thinking... Hmm... Yeah, let's say request a chest. And active provider chests behind them. When the train arrives... Oh, I actually lined that up properly. Uh, we're going to set requests on these. I think we already just do that directly. E not quite. Oh yeah, that's up here. So yes. Alright, so train arrives. We set requests. Night Dancer. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Set requests, request from buffer chests. Um, we're going to have stack filter inserters connected to the same wire. And we're going to blacklist whatever is supposed to be in this chest. So the moment the train leaves... Um, the moment the train leaves, we're going to dump whatever's in the requester chest here. Uh, the fact that we have six, though, is not going to divide evenly into the 40 stacks. We could maybe go down to five chests per train. Uh, five eights. Uh, 40. So, this is not working out the way I was thinking. I was, I was looking at this and thinking, what if instead of having to program in how much fits in a train for each different resource, 
Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, no, I was thinking we could have like a little timer reset by inserters, but instead we need a signal for... We can't... Hmm. No, I think the thing that I... That made me rethink this was realizing... If we have... Static requests and... We read contents, we actually get a fluctuation... Based on what the bots are moving. But that wouldn't actually help here, right? The problem is we want to make sure these are full before we start putting stuff into the train because we need to precisely load it. Hmm. I was just thinking as well, anything with a stack size below 10... No, that's not true. The Nequium cubes have a stack size of 8. I was going to say... Oh, wait, 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 wait. 8 fives is 40. Um, 8 times 40, 320. Divided by 5 inserters is 64 swings. Yeah, if we have... We could set this to stack size 10, and as far as I can think of at the moment, stack sizes that are below 10 are always 1, 5, or 8, and those all divide evenly into a cargo wagon if we have 5 inserters. So we could actually... If that holds into the next version, or with the other mods, uh, we could actually save on some complicated circuitry there for loading. Uh, the problem is still... I mean, th even if that's not the case, we can just do more circuitry, but the problem is still... How do we detect when we're not when this is loaded. Um, I suppose... I also want to consider what if we have those 6x6 six six containers. Um, pretend that is one big container. We could maybe have... Well, there still wouldn't be room to have requester, storage, and then active provider. So that we re could request, read, and then get rid of. I either want this, but with room for more chests somehow. Or some new kind of paradigm in how uh, how we detect when we're ready to put stuff into the train. Hmm. This would only make the problem worse for room, but you could have some other inserter putting stuff in and out of the chest, and then once it is unable to do that, you can recognize that it's full. Need some more mods like solar sil silos and warehouses, yeah. Silent Storm, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um. I mean, it's kind of a moot point, considering the mods that I'll use next time. But I still want to see if I can figure it out. 
I, I, my intuition is that there's a step beyond this design that is yet again a significant improvement. And if we could have LTN supplying, uh, if we could have the logistic network, the bot logistic network supplying LTN very quickly, uh, that would really open up some possibilities. I also want to think of a way that I could have more than one of these stations at a rail block without them sort of conflicting with each other. But I don't know if that's possible. Um, we could, of course, use the system that we've got with our modern spaceships, where they have set requests. But then we need, like, a pretty specific bot network where whatever it is that we're indirectly measuring that's in this ship, we need to be able to account for all of it that's outside of the ship, reading that with circuit wire and subtracting it from uh, the RoboPort's read logistic network contents. Be close to finishing? Yeah, getting pretty close. I think it is... What What do we got? Like, uh... Three and a half hours left today? I'm, I'm pretty confident. At the rate that, um... At the rate that we've been researching... Uh, I'm pretty confident that we actually are going to... Finish today. Um, in the last hour of gameplay, which is like three hours real time, which is uh, a bit longer than we've been going. So all of this, hmm, I can't really cut it off here. Uh, actually, it's dropping, dropping the estimate by the minute. In a couple of minutes, we'll be able to look and see exactly how fast we've been. What well, we've produced, like, what, 2.5k? Uh, consumed. That's consumed. Um, pessimistic estimate. We should produce, like, another 2,000 Deep Space Science Pack 4s in the same time. And we need... That's about what we need. Huh. It's actually looking like it's going to be a little bit close. Oh, but that's, um... That's kind of not accounting for... The fact that Naquium processes are just arriving this very instant, for example. So we're about to get 24 times... Eight. Uh, 192. Uh, that's actually going to hit exactly the three stack threshold to deliver these to the mall. We're about to get 600 Deep Space Science Pack 4s uh, times productivity bonus of 109%. Uh, so 1,254. Yeah, we're about to get about another, a bit more than a quarter of what's left to go. Was there a bit of an acceleration as well in... How fast we were making or consuming these? We're looking at actually 6.6k in this time, 11.2 per minute over this whole area, so it's like probably double that. I think we might finish today, but we might hit deep spa uh, spaceship victory today at least. Um, I think I will still continue the playthrough until we 
finish Foenestra at least. Although, maybe you don't need to see me do this six more times, spamming out the solar panels. Uh, if I have time, I might do some of that off stream. Oh, I forgot. I'm supposed to do this. Um, let's line that up carefully. More words on stream time. Maybe I should do words on stream occasionally when we're waiting for something. Not just for breaks. Uh, if anyone knows of similar things to words on stream, definitely give that a look as well. So yeah, um, unless I'm overlooking something... If I were to connect circuit wire for all of the generic storage chests in this entire block. There's also some buffer chests lying around. I don't think anything in these buffer chests is going to be put into a long train, almost by definition. If there's just one buffer chest for something here, then we're aiming to have a chest of it or less. Which means less than two cargo wagons. Uh, and the purpose of this is anything that we've got greater than significantly more than a train load of, um, we make it available to the rail network. And when we request stuff in, we keep it just a little bit above one train load. That's a lot of Vitamelange spice. So, I guess that might actually be the solution. When I do this again, I should make... I mean, I could do it right now, but it'd be a pain. But I could connect all of the storage chests so that we can read contents so that we can subtract that from whatever's in here. And then we can tell exactly when... No, that's still a problem. Because we would still need to... We'd still need circuitry to say, well, how big is a train load? That's the part I want to... That, that's one of the parts I want to sidestep. If I'm going to make a new iteration on this. Hmm. There might not be a solution. If we have to have separate chests just so that we can say read contents, then we have to have requester to storage to purple, which means we probably can't get more chests. I saw a chat battleship game. That could be fun. Yeah, I don't know. What other cool stuff can we try to design? I think... Uh, honestly, after building this stuff, I feel like I've basically solved sushi. Um, I'll be pleasantly surprised if there's a new thing to discover and implement with how to make sushi happen. I really quite like the last couple of sushi builds we did. Uh, this one in particular where 
we've got a specific side of the belt kept just empty enough for the outputs to go back onto the belt. And one of those outputs is also an input. Also, why... Okay, there's no shortage of research, uh, resource here. Why is... Huh? Wait, what? Oh, is this something I fixed that got lost when we lost a save or something? Yep. <laughs> there is a single space underground that's not supposed to be here. Whenever your complex systems break down, uh, do keep an eye out for something simple like that. Don't necessarily overthink it. On the plus side, we now get to witness this thing working. So it sometimes spits out iridium plate, which we're going to want to recycle. There it is there. We've made sure that there's room for the output over here. Uh, the actual output product goes this way, and if the iridium plate gets to the end of the belt, um, it's just going to be recycled back up here and put back down with this pattern. How do you set that red blueprint on the splitter? It's just a deconstruction planner. You could also use, like, fish or something. Whatever... Anything that you're sure is not going to be on the belt um, has the same function here. Uh, but yeah, I like the red deconstruction planner just because it looks like a full, uh, like a red light or something. Um, it's very easy to spot and it's definitely not going to be on the belt. Or if it if a random deconstruction planet did get on the belt, I'd be happy for it to be stuck here, I guess. Thanks, no worries. Uh, Nerita, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I also liked the um, the other way I came up with for dealing with recycled items, which was basically just to directly swap them into the nearest machine. Uh, and it actually turned out that we didn't need as much circuit control on that most of the time as I expected, because uh, since version I don't know what in Factorio, if you have, uh, let's see, Uh, let's say we have the same resource in two different chests being pointed at this machine. Um, they'll actually take turns. And the same applies for down here. Where was it? Uh, the uranium-235 here taken off the belt. Uh, and the uranium-235 getting put in here from the chest. Uh, these two inserters will take turns, so we're never actually going to accumulate uranium-235 uh, in this chest. We don't need extra circuit logic to watch out for that, um, which is this wire right here, actually. Yeah, this was actually unnecessary. With a different ratio, that might not be the case. An inserter would only load what the machine needs, uh, plus a bit, yeah, that's true. Um, but the point is, even without the circuit wire, these two will take turns. Um, so we're not going to end up with this overfilled, actually. Uh, yeah, this, I mean, it does add a whole bunch of chests and stuff, but... I don't think it adds much more entity-wise than if we were recycling the uranium way back up this way. 
Uh, and direct insertion is very cheap. Uh, UPS-wise as well. Um, it's kind of at the point where... I struggle to imagine a recipe... That would be difficult at this point. Because base exploration, at least as far as I'm able to think of, uh, has basically thrown every possible combination at me in terms of multiple resources, multiple outputs, uh, recycled outputs. Well, I mean, out, you know, outputs that become inputs. Random outputs. Uh, don't even get me started on Arcospheres. Uh, I am a bit surprised that this is all that's required, ultimately. Uh, and that we didn't actually need those aggregate recipes. Which were... where are they? Uh, basically... Two Arcosphere Zeta becomes two Arcosphere Omega, but also we need a, um, a Z to get the whole thing started. Um, yeah, I don't think you could get much more succinct than this. In fact, I'm sure you couldn't get more succinct than this. It's literally one machine for each folding or inverting recipe. Although, apparently, we ended up doing both inversion recipes at the same time. Not quite the same time, but... I, I can see how this happened, but it's still a little bit silly. It's fine. We are at 65% on uh, our actual spaceship victory. Let's remove these. And what's going on over here? Can we maybe fix that? What are the bots waiting for? Oh wait, we didn't run out of... no, not even close. Get rid of those... and that... And I don't understand why... Oh, I think I understand why. Wait, that doesn't even reach, does it? So, let's put this here for now. What's this butt doing? It's very confused. They're all looking a bit confused. Oh, there they go. Maybe even though we would have to take off four different ships, uh, it would be easier to have them do one row at a time next time, so that we can keep all of the temporary robot stuff outside of the blocks. No! Uh, 
and we also need one of these over here temporarily. Almost there. Oh. I see how it is. For some reason I thought I'd be able to place that by the map for a second there. I thought I marked that for deconstruct. That's so weird. Is it going to make it? I can't see how much energy this bot has. I think it's going to make it. And then we have to remove these one by one. Why has no one built this yet? Oh, I see. It would be nice if the superchargers didn't have that lack of construction range. How much power do we have? 115 over 52. Uh, that is actually enough. Let's put down our anchor. And here it comes. Fantastic. It's so hot. Uh, yes. Not for me right now, though, thankfully. Don't worry, we'll be on fire in half a year. Yeah, uh, if you're, if you're in Europe right now, Really don't underestimate it. Do stay safe. Yeah, I think next time I will do it in rows and move the ships. UK here, not as hot as yesterday though. How hot is it? High 30s? Was 40 yesterday. Alright, so once again we've got this... It says low power, but that's a lie. I'm guessing it'll just look like that until Foenestra fires up. It's probably just being reset by a script. That's like uh, the best that the mod could do kind of thing. No, there's a solar panel still missing out here. Okay, why don't we do this? And do it this way. Also, ugh. I almost feel like just abandoning those two poles right there. Alright, we finally have the last one on the way. 
Get rid of that, please. Get rid of those. And get rid of that. Beautiful. Oh. I kind of forgot we could stop using these energy beams as well. That would have saved us, uh... 44 gigawatts. Oh, no. Well, think of it as having them ready to go for something else. The bots are actually not building this. Hmm. Why don't we just move one of these construction ships real quick? Laziness 100. And get rid of that. And this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and these, and that, and so on. Viva la bot revolution, yes indeed. C for cat, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. They are playing Factorio. And with that, that's our last action here. Alright, back to Nervous Orbit with Hewlett. And you as well. And you as well. In a city block, how do you determine how many iron smelters you can have? Uh, depends what you can fit. Physically and in terms of belt bottlenecks, if you're using belts, for example. Uh, earlier on, I would try to put as many machines as I could into a block, but with the higher tier beacons, I'm not anywhere near as concerned about that. Like, we tend to have a lot more empty space now, because the beacons, uh, the item throughput is much higher per machine. Mentally, how many smelters can you fit in a city block? Mentally. Well, this old block right here has 320 assembly machines. Um, we actually fit way more smelters when it, when it comes to furnaces. We actually fit way more in the new blocks because we're using bots. Um, there's no way belts could keep up with a tenth of what these machines can do. Well, maybe literally a tenth, sure, but you get the idea. I'm still stuck on how we could improve this. Let's go back to the dispatching idea. While we wait for our research and our ships. Uh, so... I guess at Nalvis, we're also going to have probably something pretty similar to this. Except instead of sending a signal for how much storage space, uh, how, much, how much storage we have for a resource. 
Well, no, I guess we will... Yeah, we'll send it in terms of empty slots. So instead of whatever resource it is divided by stack size, uh, it's basically going to be that subtracted from our max storage. Uh, so what, divided by negative 100, and we can just have a constant combinator for whatever our maximum storage would be. So then from Nalvis, we're sending to the dispatching system. Hmm. Oh, I didn't think of that. Uh, it's fine. So, hmm, no, I didn't think of that either. We need, we need ships to come to Foenestra on, unless we have memory cells to change the clamp targets. I don't really like that idea very much. Um, I think it's, it, it sounds less robust. It sounds like it, it's, it's more prone to breaking. So ideally, I want empty ship to come here, get dispatched to whatever resource, um, come back. If they're all going to have the same clamp IDs, it, one of them will land here with resources. We need to detect if it has resources to send it back to Nalvis. Um, so I guess... We can't really have... Th this this stop at Foenestra would have to be generic. It has to be able to send... Just like LTN, it has to be able to send spaceships to... Whatever resource is available. I died in Elden Ring typing that. Rip. Use multi... Multi-clamp in ship? Uh, what do you mean by that? I think I've checked this before, but these signal inputs right here don't seem to actually do anything, right? It would be great if just feeding them a signal changed... Um, changed the clamp ID. But it seems to be just the pass-through that does something. Uh, and just to be clear, it doesn't actually give us a signal either. Oh. Hmm. So that just re... What is the... What's the utility in that? If we can only change this manually... then what's the point of being able to read it dynamically? Not clear on that one. Okay, so this definitely got a bit more complicated. So at each of our depot stops, maybe we only need one. I mean, it takes like, it takes like a second or three for a ship to clamp here and then leave. So let's say we have four different outposts. Ship arrives, if it's empty, we have to choose which outpost we're sending it to. 
Um, we could just use an anything signal and pick one arbitrarily out of the ones that have enough stuff for that ship to pick up. If we're going to do it this way, I think instead of detecting when the ship arrives here, we're going to have to... We're going to have to subtract... The, the moment the ship leaves here, we're going to have to... Um, subtract its storage space from the destination. So ship arrives uh, out of the destinations that have greater than whatever the storage capacity of this ship is. We pick one arbitrarily with any I mean with yeah, with anything. We send the ship to that destination. We subtract from the memory cell. Um, representing how much is available at that location. We should definitely calculate it in stack size in stacks. Yeah, we subtract from the memory cell that says how much is available at that destination. When the ship gets here. I think this is getting close to a bit too much to keep in my working memory. need to actually start building this stuff so that we can keep track of it all. And I'm going to be doing that in editor extensions. As my design, ship launch at loading slash unloading planet. All set destination to Foenestra. Then use another set of plants for Foenestra landing. Tinkering Teapot, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So you use different clamp IDs on the way back. So I'm guessing you have a memory cell on the ship for which... Uh, instead of a memory cell, you could have like... Well, I was going to say... You could detect if there's stuff on the ship, and you could just, like, add something to target left clamp, for example. But if we're using set requests, that becomes a bit more tricky. Hmm. Also, I just realized, even if the energy beam receivers have been nerfed a great deal, in terms of how much heat they can hold. If we're shortening the uh, travel distance this much, it's definitely not going to matter. The clamp at Foenestra will check what is the ship condition and reset the ship destination. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm looking to do here. We can use a uh, robo network to determine which resource is in the ship. I guess hmm, at Nalvis or wherever we could have a drop off station that's agnostic as to which resource it's receiving. Hmm. 
I foresee designing this is going to be a process. Uh, it's de there's definitely going to be some speed bumps. There's definitely going to be some stuff that I don't even manage to consider until it's right in front of my face. I'm kind of looking forward to it, though. Where are our construction ships? ETA, three minutes. And then we need to wait till the bots reload them as well. But that's going to be a lot faster than it's been in the past. Victory ship is ready and waiting eagerly for this research to be done. Sixty five per cent. So we've got thirty five per cent of sixteen thousand five thousand six hundred. So about 2800, a bit less than that, of Deep Space Science Pack 3. I mean 4. Minus another 400 almost. What, do we, what have we run out of here? Nothing. Wait, what? There's no arcospheres. Why are there no... I mean, there are arcospheres. They're just... Taking their sweet time being brought over here. Maybe I should move these closer to... This thing. It might actually be significant. Surely we would bottleneck on the actual resource. Uh, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not, actually. Huh. Uh, why don't we get our construction spiders to pay that block of visit? Or I could bump up the requests. No, this has to be precise. I only make three Nequitite ship using Fornestra Wormhole, then switch to Arcolink. Really? Now all after planet resource use Arcolink. Much saving time than redesigning all the ship circuit condition. Uh, yeah, well, with my late designs of spaceships, we don't have to redesign the circuit conditions at all. It's all just, the logic is external, and we use set requests on the ship. Uh, so what I want to do here is just move this nice and close. I guess we could even, I mean, I'm sure we don't need that many machines, right? Could I move this over here? Yes, I could. Actually, let me use picket dollies to do that. That would have saved some... a bit of nuisance earlier. Spiders are still on their way. It doesn't look like we're having any trouble keeping up with the antimatter canisters. Uh, I could go and build out the power system at Foenestra personally while our construction ships are struggling a bit. Well, not struggling, they're just occupied. 
Um, why don't we add some chests here? And I'll put in all the ingredients required to make a big power plant. Construction ships haven't arrived yet. Alright, let's see. 324. We've already got pipe here. 372. That's kind of perfect, actually. Uh, 168 pipe threes. Pipe three... Uh, three stacks of underground pipe. Uh, 72 condenser turbines. It's kind of a lot. Sixty-eight storage tanks. I think I only have fifty here. So let's add another stack. Uh, two and one stacks of the different types of heat pipe. whole stack of uh, high temp heat exchangers. Uh, heat exchanger. There's like a one in three chance the bots are going to go overboard with that. 32 yellows. I'm already carrying that I think. Uh, 28 sevens. Okay, seven, nine, and 15 is one stack each. Wait, am I not carrying those already? I am actually, it's fine. Uh, pumps. One stack of high temp turbine generators. Chests, chests, 16 reactors. And that's pretty much it. Okay, I guess I didn't really need those two chests. Wait, we're gonna need scaffolding. Alright, that should be fine. Should be able to finish one big power plant with each trip now. Uh, Fo and Nistra. And let's just see how much how much scaffolding is this? 9.2k. That is actually two chests. Right then. Now ships have arrived, or at least one of them has. 
Let me just check the other two. I did set the uh, constant combinators back on. That's number three. And number four is still in motion. All right, cool. So which star are we going to next? One of the ones that we've already got. Electra. I don't think we've been using Regalis. We probably will do that. I don't think we've got six more stars where we've got um, media defense installations. Come to think of it, uh, I think I didn't have media defense installation ammo in these things. Oh, I do. Okay. I wonder if I could make this totally symmetric. No, definitely not. This goes in about this far. Huh, wait a sec. Probably actually could make that symmetrical and keep it under 3500. I think it's literally just this part. I'm curious. I do appreciate sometimes that the logistic bots are separate from the construction bots. Alright, let's see that whole stress. Thirty-four fifty-nine became became thirty-five twenty-three. No. Can we shave off twenty-three hull stress and keep it symmetrical? I have my doubts. It's fine. That's what we'll have to tell ourselves. If I removed, like, these little bits, that'd be like five or ten. Just move the condenser turbines to the center. Uh, easier said than done. Yeah, that's... I don't think I'll do that. Uh, Xmlol. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Not the big ones, the small ones. Oh. Hmm. That would still be a problem, because this has to go up here anyway. When you replace the two thrusters on the right and left, then you can save some walls. Two thrusters on the right and left. As in, if I were able to get rid of these and we still hit 250. Just place them like the others, not remove them. Oh, you mean like bring this down here? That would 
make the ship a bit wider. I'd be a bit concerned about getting hit by an asteroid if that was the case. Could you put thruster in the hole? Yes, but it wouldn't be anywhere near as efficient. All right, let's go to Foenestra. Big ship, indeed. Marsh, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It wouldn't make the ship wider. Uh, I mean, it would because... Uh, because that's wrong, actually. It wouldn't make the ship wider. However, it would bring the thruster down here, which is actually getting into territory where I'm a little bit concerned that it's going to get hit. Turn 500 steam into water saves so much integrity? What do you mean by that? That's what the condenser turbines are for. We can't just turn 500 degree steam into water with any with, any, with anything else. Um, let's see. Internal steam. Uh, sorry. Right click. Steam to water. Does this just work with any temperature? I did not realize that was a thing. Use biochem lab, lab instead of condensers. So we need the electric boiler technology, but we do it in a biochem lab. That's... Biochem lab is pretty big, but I'm guessing... Uh, I'm guessing it's going to be a lot better space efficient wise. Yeah, I didn't know that was an option. Let's see. So does it just do any steam temperature to water? Min temperature 15 degrees, max temperature 100. Wait, what? Uh, okay, so it can actually be any temperature of steam. And how fast would this be without any modules? Uh, 800 steam per second. That's 10 condenser turbines. And that's without speed modules. And I'm pretty sure we would just fill it with speed modules because the power cost is going to be completely trivial compared to the power cost of the Nexus. Not to mention the power produced by the reactor. Alright, so how fast is this? 3,040 3, steam per second. Um, it's like 6.25 High temp turbine generators that we need. Actually, plus a little bit. So... Max steam, 500 degrees, 215. Oh, right. Seven. Yeah, that's way below. Huh. So we only need one for this whole thing? Except we have to get the water back into this thing. We need to pipe it out in all directions here. Uh, but yeah. That would definitely help. I don't think that would be the difference between getting down to 3,000 hull. But definitely something to consider uh, next time. How does that recipe even work? I wonder.
yeah, I just thought uh, condenser turbines were our only option there. And we haven't got a great ratio f uh, or anything. It's like 2.5 condenser turbines that we need per high temp turbine generator. But I wanted to be absolutely sure this didn't get blocked. Uh, that probably would have been good to consider for um, this monstrosity of a reactor. But I suppose we've got no shortage of space here. Um, it's better to make the most of the steam. Oh, I kind of forgot to make sure... I think we did get everything delivered here. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just sort of took off when there were no bots in motion. Alright, uh, ETA... two and a half minutes. How's our science looking? Uh, we're very close to another delivery. As soon as we get some more processes. Oh, and how's this going? That's not looking that much better. I don't think... Why are there no Zetas? We've got Zetas right here. Uh, the Zetas in here, but not here. Okay. Oh, that might have been a bit of an oversight. So we're not taking Zeta out of here unless we've got X amount of it. Hmm. Should we lower the threshold? So we keep like three of each of these in the chest, uh, in the giant chest. That sounds risky. Um, we should probably move all of these as well. Having too many of these machines is actually a problem. It's more arcospheres sitting idle. Wire up a constant combinator to the box so it can pretend it has more of the Zeta. Yeah, but then it's just going to be a problem with a different arcosphere. Hmm. There's a Zeta right here that's not getting put in because we're not trying to do the inversion recipe. This might be a bit dangerous, but I'm going to lower the threshold a little bit. We're going to aim to have at least three of each type of Arcosphere in here, ready for swapping. And then we want to have like up to five of each type available here. That seems to be working pretty well. If I could have them share the same input chests, but take turns, uh, that would be all the better, because then a recipe would be happening right now. Hmm. 
How would I have them take turns? No, that would be a pretty big pain to try and sort out. Also, bringing them over here doesn't really seem to have helped with the bot transport time problem because sometimes they're bringing arcospheres from up here to fill this out. It's fine, I guess. Train is coming for Tesseracts. Okay. You just add the problem spheres to that combinator. A memory cell with a module operator can make the signal by reading hand contents? Hmm. Are we doing that here at all? We're not reading hand contents. Uh, if we do read hand contents, is that gonna mess up this circuit at all? I don't think so. They all swing at the same time, and they're the only ones that react to something. Hmm. I'm also going to not have room for this. I could put it somewhere else. What's this? Blacklist. Oh, that makes sense. Let's see. So, let me just turn that the other way. Read hand contents. We've already got a condition on this though, of everything equals two. I don't know how we would have another condition. Hmm. If these were everything equals two, and these were like everything equals two minus a hundred, and we had a constant combinator over here. Minus 100 for each of these. So this is negative 98. And then So how do we have this circuit that flips? We go read hand contents pulse on all three of these. And then it was like modulus two or something. Like as a memory cell, is it? Modulus two. Each modulus to output each. Uh, let's put a constant combinator over here. No, we need it to read pulse. If the memory cell increments on each swing, then modulo zero, uh, modulo two, would flip between zero and one per swing. Yeah. Um, all right, so are we just waiting on a Zeta to test this? That's kind of unfortunate. Ooh. 
Why are these so... Oh my god. Why do we suddenly have 20 Epsilon and 24 Phi? Uh, I'm scared. Let's go back to... Trying to keep five of everything in here. And I'll temporarily deconstruct that. And we'll put these spheres back. Hey, Midden. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um... So let's see. How would we... Oh, it's plus one. So these would be negative 97. And I guess they would also... They would also have to read hand contents. Um, I guess we could do that on the green wire to here. And then... This is confusing. Are the spiders set to trash the archers? Yes. Let me just do a little test of this so I can see it working first. Uh, we'll need a pulse generator. Alright. So, some kind of signal. Uh, this needs to be a memory cell, actually. Turn that off, turn it on. So this is one. This is zero. This is one. This is zero. Okay, cool. I usually insulate the different systems with a pass-through combinator and then remove the ones that I don't need. Oh, this is everything equals two, so... No, that would be a problem if I did it that way. I'm just trying to think of how to minimize combinator count here now. Also, why on earth are we getting no Zetas? Hmm. So... We get one of each, one of each, e everything equals two, these things swing, and that triggers our flip-flop over here, so that becomes a, si out that outputs a signal of one, and then we send that over here, plus the negative 100 to offset, so this isn't looking for the same condition. Uh, we will actually need to read from these. So plus one, minus a hundred, that's minus ninety-nine. Uh, minus ninety-eight. And then minus ninety-seven from this. But how do we go back to... How do we tell this not to pick up when this has a signal? If I connect... Hmm... I could con maybe connect green wire there. Instead of this red wire connection. So this is actually going to hold on to each... Uh, one of each of those Arcosphere signals. Oh, it's not doing it. Wait, did I not make it a memory cell? Well, there's your problem. 
And then if that goes here. No, that's that's gonna make it one, two, three. If all of these are empty, that's one, two. These would be ready to go. Once this has something, none of them are going to pick up. That actually works, I think. Uh, I, I, I put that in at the wrong time. Oh, what is this? Wait, what? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Green wire, bad for the memory cell part for this. Red wire. Um, okay. We've got two of each in here, so I can leave that be. And then... Green wire goes here, I think. So once these all insert again, we should have one signal of each. Over here, that didn't work. Why not? Because I haven't done read hand contents pulse. You absolute derp. I forgot what this was supposed to be set to. Um, one, two, three, minus a hundred. I want to be absolutely sure here. Negative 97. So that should be it. So these are not going to pick up. And these are going to pick up when there's three, of, there's one of each. Once the Zeta is on the way, yep, here we go. We're about to find out. No, that's the wrong... Here we go. Uh, I was going to say I think it's working, but we don't have a mechanism to sw flick this back. Um, let's see. If... I think we just need... Hmm. How do I read from these without contamination? Oh, I know. Um, this is starting to add more combinators that I would like, but if I just have... read from the green wire... Minus one of each, like just offset this constant. And also offset this memory cell. So it's going to be minus two for each of these. So that's going to be red wire into here. Minus two. And green wire into here. Uh, and this is going to be a decider, actually. Alright. Green wire goes here. Three, two, and two. That makes sense. And minus two for all these. That tells us what we've actually got. No, it doesn't. Why is Zeta four? One, two. Wait, what? Memory cell has one of each. This has one of each. The... Where is that? Oh, wait, no. 
Where does where does where's this four Zeta coming from? Oh, don't tell me it's coming from like the logistic bots. No, that hasn't been a problem before. Also, it's still saying four Zeta. The inserter reacts to their own hand content. Yeah, but it doesn't really matter while they're swinging. I don't understand where this four Zeta is count, uh, coming from. Oh, I missed a negative. Okay. So when it's so it's going to be one of everything. The moment that this is ready to flip. Hmm. I don't want to have to add a pulse generator to this as well. Oh, I could just... This is... Yeah, I've overthought this. Um, we could just take from that red wire. When everything is equal to... Negative 99. Output everything. Input count 1. Um, and then just send that here. So once these three pick up another lot, it should reset our, uh, our thing here to zero. Come on. Bring to me an Epsilon. Pretty please. Here it comes. And... Drum roll. It works. I think we did it. I think that's it. Alright, so... Uh, get rid of these. Oops. Uh, it's fine. Get rid of that. There was one thing I wanted to add to this, though, which was... Oh yeah, this little detail of actually getting rid of the Tesseracts. Um, I think we can just passive provider that. Alright, so this can go over here. What is this? And we'll get rid of the inputs here. Hey, Dardano. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so these two now share input chests for their precious, precious Arcospheres. And they take turns. I do not look forward to Arcosphere management. Nah. It's fine. Alright, so this one activates, our little memory cell remembers one of each of these. Um, the conditions are such that everything equals two on this one. The memory cell adds that up to another, to three, so those won't trigger. These ones have an arbitrary offset so that they won't trigger in the first place. 
Um, they're looking for everything equals negative 97. Negative 100 on that constant. Plus 3 from this, this, and these. And then, just so that we can flip this back, we read the red wire. This is another situation where we could reduce our combinator count if we had another wire color. Um, but because we're reading from the red wire here, we say if everything equals 99, output 1 down to here, uh, to this memory cell. It's possible to make it much simpler than this. Nope. Everything but must be maximally complicated. It's the only way. Alright, after all that, uh, we're not seeing it go fast enough to need more than one machine, at least for now. But... I'm sure... Sometimes it'll matter. All right, cool. Oh. Oh, I made a mistake. Uh, this is nothing but tesseracts. Are we going to pick this up? Apparently not. Okay. Uh, meanwhile... Did we get more research done? I think I failed to notice it happening. Yeah, I actually missed it. Maybe we should actually reduce... the number of each type of arcosphere we try to put in this chest. Weirdly enough. So there's more available to be flipped. So that it's more likely that we have at least one available of any given type in the chest at a time. It'll take a, a few minutes before that kicks in, unless I do this. Maybe I could even... No, that would be bad. Would it, though? If I... Hmm. Yeah, no, that's not going to work. No, I could use a red wire over here for this little bit, and I could read both this and this output chest to decide what we should be folding. That might not be the worst idea, actually. Alright, so these two chests are being read for the purposes of Arcosphere folding now. Uh, I think... Hmm... I can't really afford to connect a wire to this as well. We can't read the hand contents while it's swinging. How did you break my balancer? I didn't break it. I've just been playing with it a little bit. Not the balancer, really, but other stuff. We've also been doing the same recipe or two over and over. So there's that.
Maybe need more Arcospheres, yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have done these based on outputs and saturated the inputs after all. There's a Zeta available right here, even though we're short on Zetas. But it's not outputting. Because it doesn't... It, it's saying we don't want more Lambdas, even though there's no Lambda here. Hmm. Well, it's functional anyway. Alright, uh, we're at Foenestra. Let's land right about here. And I guess I could put down some roboports. Oh, we've already got our robot system here. With a surprisingly large number of bots. It will not necessarily pull out all spheres. It can be fixed, but it shouldn't be needed. Yeah. The number of inserters that we would need to make sure it pulls them all out, um, it wouldn't fit around the uh, the big container anymore. Why don't we just keep going down for this reactor? I keep there we go how big can we go here that's about it close enough oh well then more please Oh, this is not the construction ship that I'm used to. Okay. Definitely a bit quicker than having the bots do it. Speaking of bots, our construction ship's back at Alvis Orbit. Uh, I guess we'll go to Electra next. We've already got infrastructure there. How much more power do we need? All of it. Uh, so. Electra. And I need to remember to send the next two ships uh, quite soon. Alright, more scaffolding. I'm beginning to wonder if I underestimated how much we need here. Uh, it looks like it's going to be okay. Whoops.
me fit a uh, blueprint yet. Oh yeah, easily. Alright, let's move that supercharger a little bit. And place one right about here, I suppose. Oh, I kind of put it in the way of the heat pipe. It's fine. I turn for a second, and now we are at the ring. Indeed. How goes powering it? Uh, four of these monstrosities should be enough. Four of these. And I'm just going to do them in a big line down here. Wowza, indeed. Yeah, it's a bit over the top. But apparently this is probably a victory condition as well. So if that's the case, I guess it's not that ridiculous. I was thinking once we finish this there would actually be some kind of like in-game utility to it. I'm sure one or two ZPMs would be enough. Zero point machines? Oh, I forgot to... Actually, let's not do that. Alright. And all of these. And all of these. And all of these. All of these. Let's drop off the reactors so that we have 16 more inventory slots. this part. Zero point module. Now I want to watch Stargate, indeed. Stargate was pretty good. I didn't see that much of it, but it wasn't bad. Uh, we need to connect these robot networks. Oh, and I forgot, we were trying to pump. Did we actually get the piping needed for that? Yeah, we were pumping in fluid from the old reactors. Let's see how that's going. I still see steam here. Oh, it is pumping 1100 of it still. Wow, that is taking a while. And we're still putting fuel in this. Whoops. And then the next version. Oh, also that is exactly the antimatter reactors that we need for the last of our power plants. So why don't we get ready to put those down here. We grab the rest of this scaffolding. I guess I can remove this request. room do we really need? Uh, 
Oh, we can already... We can already do it. Fantastic. I'll still drop the scaffolding off while I can. And I guess I'll stop worrying too much about preserving whatever heat and fluid we've got over here. It does pain me a little bit to do this, but... On the other hand, it's kind of cathartic to get rid of this mess. It's not exactly a mess, but... We can do better now. Considering how much the build uses, this is a drop in the bucket. Wait, what is? Yes, I've seen it all like a lot of times, actually. I think we need a storage chest. The wasted heat, yeah. Well, it's all just water, it, it's all just ice and antimatter stream, which have both been flowing very, very easy, easily lately. We've got our antimatter stream production. Oh, antimatter canister in particular. Um, to the point where... Wow. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. 30.1 per minute. That's times a thousand for the actual antimatter stream. 30,000 per minute. That is kind of a lot. I don't think we really need more than this. Um, we don't need to kill our power connections. Highland substation. We could probably use some RoboPort Reach down here. Oh, I've got no energy. Look at this. We even need that there? I don't think so. Uh, 
we've disconnected this robot network. Let's fix that. Doesn't actually have power. Doesn't really need it, I guess. That bot sneak, though. Okay, that's feeling a bit cleaner. I'm going to need more power here. And we're going to need a lot more scaffolding. Uh, I think just one more trip is going to have this build finished though. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Actually, let's drop off everything we can. Could rip up scaffolding? That's true. How much did I figure out that we needed? Uh, it's actually like just half of one of these, so maybe this much? About 5.7k. Uh, we do need some other things, though. Although, that might be enough. Easier to just go get more. I'm not seeing these reactors built. Oh, that's why. There we go. There actually isn't a middle there. Whatever. There we go. That's a lot of logistic bots. And back to the mall. I actually just wanted to do a double tap to dash across this. Thanks, Terraria. Uh, now this orbit. And we are at 81% on Spaceship Victory. Well, Factory Spaceship 5, technically, but that's what we need. Uh, no doubt we're waiting on Nequin processors. Yes. We've already got... We need 56 more Deep Space Science packs to trigger a delivery. Which is... Uh, only seven more processors. I could do this right now. Don't know if it'll be enough to push us over the edge for... Um, wait, we've got 65 processors? Uh, it doesn't look like it. 
Aquium processor, 65. Where are they? Oh, this count. Oh. Oh, that is over... Oh, that is overkill and a half. Um, okay, before the train comes, the train is coming. Uh, how about... Mm, what have we got? Another 48? Let's go... 60. Um, how about... Actually... We pick up these processors and put them in the train. It's not working very well. Let's bring the spiders down. Just turn this into... I guess temporarily turn it into a passive provider. a green chest still makes sense. Let's just not set the requests very high. Alright, cool. Train away with 60 processors. Uh, 480... How much have we got left to go here? One-fifth of 16k. Thirty-two hundred. Divided by about two. So like sixteen hundred. It's still going to be another delivery or two, I think. Where are our construction ships? We need to send these two to Electra. Good timing, I can just see the bots settling down now. And the other two construction ships are on their way already. Um... So we need about 20. I could do... I was going to say I could do two on either side. But they're going to want to clamp together if I'm not careful. I have 1.1k points and I'm still not a follower? Not the fastest spoop. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's plan out where this is going to go. Uh, and then over here. Bolly, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Alright, so some superchargers. Oh my goodness. Uh, Veldak, thank you very much for the gifted sub. Uh, not the fastest. Hope you like it. Very much appreciated. Thank you again, Veldak. The 37 gifted subs in the channel. Thank you so much. Did you stop using the blueprint with superchargers? Yeah. Alright, one of these should be... Not quite here yet, actually. 
And then on this side. Whoops. Uh, same kind of thing. That's going to be our superchargers. Doesn't have to be equidistant as long as it works. So now we can see where we're going to put our ships. Actually, now that I think about it, I'd better be careful that we don't have one uh, the second construction ship here clamp on the wrong side of the first one. Fantastic. It's been, but I'm going to bed. Have a great time. No worries. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good sleep. What's our ETA? Two minutes to Nalvis Orbit again. It's so nice to see ingots just constantly being smelted. Uh, I would have thought we'd have a burst of research by now. Here, here it comes. 616 deep space science packs incoming. Alright. Uh, now might be a good time to have a little break, actually. Uh, since there's a few things that are traveling. Let's do some words on stream. And continue from where we left off. I'll be uh, starting words on stream in about 30 seconds. And I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun.
Oh, I forgot to put the screensaver on. It's fine. Looks like we're still in the middle of some words. Okay, let's pause that for now. Uh, are we out of scaffolding? That is a little bit concerning to say the least. We have been going through it very, very quickly, but still. Uh, let's see, scaffolding. There's 56,000 over here, um, but it seems there's way too much, uh, way too many deliveries of science, um, happening from the mall. English is not my first language. I still do pretty well. Um, what happened here? Well, we've still got eight kinds anyway. Why is it not... Okay, I'm curious. If we've got... This kind of a layout... For our Arcospheres... Uh, let's see... We're only trying to do one of the inversion recipes. And we're missing C. Uh-oh. Oh, that's even worse. Oh, no. Um, have we just reached the point where... Have we just met the conditions where this isn't good enough? Where we need the specific... Um, the aggregate recipes? hope not. What was that a scene? No? Uh, let's see. What, what was the catalyst for that? Uh, theta. Oh, that works. Apparently it does not. Here we go. It's a nice game to learn words. Well, the existence of words. Learning of words, yes. Um, Alright, we'll let that run for a bit. I don't know why it keeps breaking for you. I have 82 spheres left in landing pad. And it works just fine with that amount. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I thought it was actually working perfectly before, but... I think it, it must be a very specific combination of recipes um, that we've been running that allow it to get this bad. So that's enough to get our inversion. Wait, if we have no C, why are we doing the inversion? Ah, uh, whatever. It's probably fine. Probably. Ooh, 97%. Uh, next delivery of science, we are finishing the game. 
In fact, I could probably... Let's see, 97% of what? 12,000? Oh, 16,000. Derp. No, 8,000. Um, 8,000 times 0 0.03. 240 divided by 2. Uh, we need less than one stack of Deep Space Science Pack 4. We're currently missing pack 3, we're missing pack 2, uh, catalogs are already on their way, pack 2 is missing pack 1, pack 1 is missing Naquitite, Naquium Plate rather. Oh, is that because... Hmm... We will need to make sure we get some Naquium plate here. What's the request priority here? A bit lower. Cool. Should we do any other inversions? I think Lambda and Phi should get swapped. Oh, we've got Lambda and Phi. Th those swap to each other. We could do Theta down to whatever. Uh, theta becomes Gamma. And that'll probably be enough to rebalance everything. You know what? May as well give it a beacon. makes Xi? Uh, it is Epsilon. That's what we're doing here. Maybe it has something to do with the way we're outputting. Because we end up stuck on partial outputs. Yeah, that might actually even be it. I don't want to do... Uh, if I could fit it, I would happily do double output inserters for all of these. It's just the corner ones that are a problem. We can easily fit four outputs for the inversion ones. And we can fit two outputs for most of the others. We just can't fit a second output up here. We could put a purple chest here. That might be the way to go. And we can't put it here, though, if the beacon's going to reach everything. Hmm. Whatever. One more beacon.
Wait, but we're controlling these based on outputs. Ah, uh, forget it. What? Whatever. It's fine. This is fine. Make a memory cell and remember which recipe to run. Then output from memory cell to inserters. Remember which... That way inserters will have time to pull everything out. Maybe, yeah. I do like to try and keep the combinator ca uh, count down when I can. Every solution that I've thought to... <clears throat> excuse me. Every th solution that I've thought of for these little problems just requires more combinators than I'm particularly happy to use. Um, oh, we've got too many gammas now. That'll do for C, I guess. What about that additional constant combinator, the one that changes averages? Uh, I don't remember exactly how that would go. How are we changing the averages? Bottom left. We pretend the average is lower or higher, but why and when? I don't remember. Would it be here? Each to the power of two. No. Try to switch it off. What am I switching off? Oh, th was it this one? We're pretending there's one more of everything so that if there's zero of something, uh, it doesn't get confused about the average. Uh, I could set it to negative one. That might be a bit better. We've only got seven types right now, so this is actually really necessary. It doesn't get confused about average, but it does. There's only seven types of Argosphere, and we're dividing by eight. Um, actually, wouldn't we have to... Oh, wait, that's not helping, is it? Uh, I don't think there's anything we can do about that. So what was this supposed to do? We get the average and the count. Oh, no, it's because it's each minus A output each. Yeah, because we wouldn't get a signal for whichever one's missing here. That's because you ran out of some which will not happen anymore? Well, we still only have seven. Which one are we missing? Uh... It's not Lambda C, it's not Zeta, Theta, Epsilon. Epsilon just appeared, I think. Yeah. Cassandra Nima, good to see you again. Well, welcome, hope you're doing well. What are we waiting on? Oh, nothing. We're waiting on a big fat nothing. 
Fantastic. And this is it. This is our victory train. It's been a long road. It's been a very long road. Also, that reminds me. Uh, clamp. Or anchor, rather. Right about here. And... Anchor... Right about here. Oh, crap. Uh, remove tile ghosts. Down to here. Interstellar victory train? Yes. It, it's a train what has antimatter engines. It's fine, don't worry about it. Shall we watch? How much is it bringing? 200. And I guess I should head to the victory ship. Mm, that's a satisfying sound. Why don't... Did I just have a... That was weird. I think I had a star probe in my trash slots. And away we go. So let's check. Oh. It would probably help if I fueled it, huh? That might be a good idea. Um, where are we going to do the water input? Mm. Up here? Uh, I also meant to put a... Robopot here earlier. Alright, so that goes there. We can grab water from here. And antimatter stream. Shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, maybe just a little difficult. No, that's fine. I could even push it through this spaceship if I wanted to. But, no. I guess I can speed this up a bit. Actually, we still have no scaffolding. Oh, I forgot. I was gonna, like, manually pick up the scaffolding or something. Um, I stopped using short trains to bring scaffolding over here because there was so much short train traffic. But it looks like everything else is being prioritized to be taken out of here first, arbitrarily. I could... One, two, three... I could make a specific um, scaffolding pickup. Kind of hard to see where that would go. One off. And like so. Uh oh. Um, 
so request threshold one, 25k, uh, provide threshold, provide stack threshold actually, 160, um, that's for short trains though, uh, Let's just stop worrying about lubricant for a moment. And we go... Scaffolding... Can't actually put this where we need to. That'll do. Here it comes. All right. Uh, I guess until the scaffolding gets here, we're not going anywhere. Did you design all the elements of your rail network yourself? Yes, indeed. Grumpy Kitten, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so this goes here. And then we need some long pipe and pumps. We might have to switch off a couple of these shields temporarily. Gotta make sure I remember to turn those back on. Uh, we've already got a train picking up the scaffolding. And we don't need that much of it yet. So, oh, it's only bringing 600. Wait, what? It's only bringing 616. Request stack threshold 160. Request threshold 100k. Provide threshold. Oh, that was supposed to be provide stack threshold. Well, that works. I'm sure it'll be enough for right now. I was actually going to send it early anyway. In the time you spent planning the train, you could have run down and picked up the scaffolding yourself. That would not be lazy enough. Besides, we need a bunch of scaffolding for the construction ships in a little while. In fact, I might have sent the construction ships over here without scaffolding. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. Okay. Back to Nalvis Orbit with you. And there's probably another one. Oh, it probably clamped onto the other two. Now it's in the way. Well, whatever. You've got lots of scaffolding. We'll spend that first. Uh, and we need some of these. Let's just lay out all of this first. And we'll wait till those chests are empty before we send this one back. Uh, we will be needing to not overfill this. Water less than, let's say, 15,000. Unfortunate. And 
this one. Perfect, not so perfect. fill it up with antimatter stream. I can't believe for all the time I had to prepare here, I forgot to do that. It's fine. Uh, we also need antimatter canisters here. Oh, wait. There's no roboport range, that's why. Um, alright. How about this? Let's see, that's still not going to cover it. Move the vertical pipe, or uh, the vertical 15 pipe one up, it's not connected to the corner. Wait, what? Oh, true. Oh, no. Alright, this has to be... Five and three. Wait, what? Oh, I didn't mean to handcraft. I thought I was in Navsat. Alright, so one of these. We still need to go over there. are on the way. Should probably make sure we have a bit more than that, but let's make sure they all get their 50 first. The stream is flowing in at a rate of zero. Wait, what? Oh. How did we get some in here? I'm glad I double checked this. That would have been a that would have been very misleading. Yeah, I do wonder how we got any antimatter stream in here just now. Do pumps... no. I was going to say, do pumps get like a tiny amount of charge for free or something, but that wouldn't have been enough to put this in here. I don't recall deleting any power poles that would have... Oh, there was a ship here. I think. Yeah, 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 it actually just left to bring us more interstellar travel data, because we put it in here. That makes sense. Okay. Um, Roboport? That still doesn't reach. Tragic. Much, how many antimatter canisters do we have? Only 116. Uh, maybe I should speed this up a bit.
what's this called? A particle collider. This ludicrous oversupply of power that we've had for a long time in Nalvis Orbit is actually just a little bit more than the cost of running a single anchor. Provide stack threshold is only one. So why hasn't a train come to bring this? Oh, it has. Well, there you go. Fantastic. All right, let's uh, let's get a little bit more aggressive with how much antimatter canister we're looking for. I do not want to run out. Going to take a little while to fill the water as well. Antimatter stream is actually going to be filled first. Let's pick up our spider. And. Seems good. Once again, we've only got seven types of spheres. We're missing lambdas? In what universe can we be short on lambdas? That is so strange. Maybe I should have gone to the trouble of keeping the inputs and outputs of these empty. Lambda strike back. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, I don't even want to fix it, to be honest. We did it. We got there. I mean, we could play with teleportation later on. Uh, so we're still looking for more antimatter stream. How much is available for pickup here? Uh, 1.7k. Why don't we make that happen? And that is being taken over here. Yes, good. Let's check back in on Electra. It's still going. Still haven't emptied this quite yet. There's a bit of bot haloing going on, but we're mostly using the superchargers. This one's already close enough to empty, I think I'll send it back to Nalvis Orbit. I feel like we should have a supercharger here. In fact, if there had been a supercharger here, if there'd been... 
Oh wait, I think there was floor here before, but not the supercharger. So the ship landed and destroyed it. I was going to have it blocked by a supercharger so this wouldn't happen before. Alright. Still don't have our... Here it comes. No? Where's our antimatter? No, it's still being loaded. Okay. Um, hmm. How about we bring the spiders over? The trouble with the direct swap recipes is there's eight of them. So I would have to... It's going to take up a lot of space here. Let's try nonetheless. And if I... My lambda. And I would have to drag this all the way up here. Oh wait, we don't want to do Lambda Fi right now. If I can't automate it, then I definitely don't want to do Fi to Lambda. I mean Lambda to Fi. Maybe there's like just one or two of these that I could keep running slowly. That would keep it going. Why is one bot bringing all of those? That's kind of weird. We've got 339 logistic bots available, but this one is going back and forth. Very, very slowly. There's no Zeta. Wait, what? Oh, because there's none in here because it's not enough. Okay, what makes Zeta? Omega to Zeta? But there's never any Omega. Uh. Hmm. What else can we do? Epsilon to whatever? Epsilon to C. There's 15 C. That's not really the problem. What about something to Lambda? I mean, Gamma. Theta to Gamma. Yeah, we can do that. Well, that's probably been a big part of why the bots have been slow with this. Why does, what, what is the deal with this one bot going back and forth when there's two types of request? Perhaps check if all inserters are reacting on correct recipe at correct factory? Uh, I mean, it was running fine before. We've got recipe 1, 2, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I, and J. So far I've not experienced any issues with this. Hmm. What are we missing here? We need lambdas. Uh-oh. Are we checkmated? I mean, I could get lambdas from like, removing this. But still. And it took the lambda somewhere else. That's a problem. What if we just pick all of these up for a second? some inversion happening. Is it actually because of the system of operating these based on outputs instead of inputs? Yeah, I think maybe allowing inputs unconditionally and just going by outputs and they take multiple swings to do the outputs and then they stop some, like with this one for instance, we've got all of these outputs waiting and it's decided that it doesn't need to do this recipe anymore and these three are sitting idle. Um... I don't know, maybe that's the problem. Operating on outputs is fine as long as you keep the buffer bigger. I mean, the buffer was big enough before. We've got 53 phi. Speaking of which, maybe we can do phi to lambda now? Lambda, Gamma, and uh, that's also Lambda, actually. Hmm. Wait, what? You have condition on input and output? No. No, I don't. Condition only output and input is unrestricted. That's what I had been doing. I was thinking maybe that was the problem, but it takes a long time to manifest itself. 
Kind of like a rare asteroid hit. We're still waiting on water here. Why is it only pumping 12 per second? Uh-oh. Uh, what? Because I switched this off, that's why. Probably because I accidentally got a bunch of extra water here earlier. Ragathian? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. The real issue is probably just you messing with it too much. I mean, I didn't mess with it earlier. I only changed how much we're trying to put in this output buffer chest. And then changed it so that we read what is in that chest as well. Maybe the moment that something is unaccounted for while it's in this inserter is actually a problem. That could actually... I don't know, I, I don't think that'd be enough. Maybe try to output only one of each for general usage, but then we really slow down. Um, then we really slow down actually using the things. Later, try to increase it. Yeah, that's what we did earlier. It worked fine at a rate of five uh, for a long time. That's a lot of epsilons. Well, it's looking a bit more promising actually now. I think we just have to do more of these direct conversion recipes. Oh. How many of each do you keep as minimum in the landing pad before outputting? Uh, it was five? Yeah, five. We could maybe bump that up a bit. We could we could aim for ten each. All right, so water is coming in bursts, which is kind of weird. It goes from 0 to 2400 to 0. Oh, it's control behavior. Okay. Yeah, it's just the water leveling out here. Cool. Uh, so we've got water. We've got antimatter stream. We've got antimatter canisters. We've got some heat on the way. And we've got quite a lot of interstellar travel data. I imagine that'll be enough. Uh, where's our ship? Nexus Prime. I don't... Hmm, how much data am I going to need? We only have to run it for 10 minutes, right? So probably not a lot. So I would certainly hate to set out and almost finish the game. We could definitely wait until it gets back. We've got lambdas again. Alright, let's see... 
Let's see if we can stop doing the direct conversion recipes again. And see if it stabilizes. Doesn't seem to want. It's trying to do this recipe Lambda and Omega in. Oh, wait, what's happened here? That was weird. Okay. Maybe that was the reason? I mean, it was only recently that I did anything to cause that to happen. But it looks like we may have reached the promised land. It was probably... I forget how low I went, but I probably went too low on how many Arcospheres we keep in the big chest for each type. So if we keep that at 10 minimum in here for each one, uh, we can probably set this one as high as we like. And I'm guessing we could probably go for like seven or something and it'd be fine, but I'd rather not play with fire. Press R? Wait, what? Oh, typo. I also found some insert inverted inserters on my map. I don't think it's feature or bug. I think I accidentally pressed R when doing something else, but not aware of it. Well, that'll mess things up for sure. Yeah, I think... I think we've stabilized. Hold on. How have we gotten down to six? Oh, right. It's this inserter that the condition is we don't go below 10. For any one thing in here. But the inserters that invert recipes will happily take... Uh, gamma all the way down to 7, for example. Yeah. I think, I think this is it. I think this is fine. Alright, we got heat. 4.4 thousand. Why is it not putting in more canisters? Probably because... Probably because... Oh, because the accumulators haven't dropped. That's what we're measuring to decide when to put more in. Okay. That reminds me. Uh, speed signal goes here. I haven't actually put a clamp on this. I mean, it's our victory ship. We don't need no clamp. Are you ready to trash everything and upgrade to the latest version of SE yet? Or are you waiting for the upgrade to Factorio? Um, well, that's not why I'm waiting to do SE.6. Uh, I'm going to do a new playthrough after this one. But maybe I'll wait a little while first. I want to get into Oxygen Not Included. Play a bit more Terraria. Maybe I'll do like two days of each game each week. Um, 
and we'll, we'll have a little, maybe have a little break from space exploration, or at least the playing the single player part of it. I might do some design stuff, like lay out as much as possible in editor extensions before we start. Did I hear oxygen not included? I love oxygen not included. Yes, indeed. Mazzle Fazzle, uh, Clis, Clishu. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Uh, and Shamrock as well. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to breaking through the mid game of Oni, which I haven't done before. Well, this is very empty. What the hell? Are we going to have power issues if I don't wait for more water? I don't think so. Can you update your week schedule so we know when you'll play what game? Yeah, of course. Definitely. We're down to 6C. So that's almost half. Uh, we set our minimum to 10 here. It went down to almost half of that. So yeah, I think I did, just did set the minimum too low earlier. Alright, we're almost there. This one's filling up now. Once this gets to like 14k, we'll be heading off. Riding off into the sunset. Oh, I hope I... Oh, we've definitely got enough scaffolding here. I think. Probably. Seriously? They've laid out 15 of the 16 tiles we need here to put down another uh, supercharger. That's a little frustrating. Nine point nine A. Just in time for the spaceship, indeed. Noxy Way Gaming, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, we're really just waiting on it right now because we're waiting on construction ships for other reasons, also. Uh, that was quick. Alright, you can go back to... Electra. And switch this off. Number three is actually ahead of Vanalvis Orbit. Leave that where it is. And we know where one and two are. Just started the space part, still have no idea what to do. That is very normal. It's pretty overwhelming at first. Bolly, welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well. 12k? Close enough? It's probably close enough. All right, um, does it matter what we set the destination to? I think I remember as soon as the uh, Nexus gets started, we go into like another dimension or something. We could wait for... 
Oh, it's actually still heading in the other direction. We've got, like, almost half a chest of interstellar data. That's probably enough to last ten minutes, right? So let's set sail. Uh, I'll just aim it at... Like... Crystal Collective. Sure, why not? And away we go. Time to find out in practice if this will actually win the game. Faster, faster. We're at 185 right now. 200. 210. 220. 230. More power. Uh... Power usage is capping out at the predicted 6.25 plus change gigawatts. And that is in line with our speed. 253. It's happening. I don't think it will start happening until... I never actually named the victory ship. Is Goldcrest okay? Is it too late to change it? What should we call this thing? Has to leave the system to kick in. Yeah, I figured. Uh, that's bad luck. Did we forget to smash a bottle on the front? Call it chat. It's so imposing. It, it looks like a boss ship from like Raptor Call of the Shadows or something. Chunky boy. <laughs> Campaign 1, Wave 1, Boss or something? Chat, but in French. I like that. Cat? Oh my goodness. I wasn't expecting to see that. Luckily, it doesn't take long for the shields to recharge. Unsinkable too. All right, that that gives me an idea. Unstoppable. No hubris here. I dubbed thee the unstoppable. Yep, exactly the amount of power. Ooh, what happened to you? Wait, what? No, you're kidding. The Nexus power consumption is dipping. What's wrong with the power? It doesn't look like anything is wrong with the power. Do we have enough heat yet? We should. We've got 5.4, 5.7k on the edges. 
all of the heat exchangers say they're working. Output full. What happened to our speed? Do we need more accumulators? I think we might just need more accumulators for when we hit the really big asteroids. Okay, we've got like 40 hull stress that we can play with. Uh, and not a whole lot of room to add accumulators for that matter. Let's put some back here. And here. Let's see the whole stress. Ooh. 3496, 3500 exactly. Well, if that's not enough accumulators to eat an asteroid, then we're in trouble. When the shields are down, regenerating them completely. Yeah. Um, the more shield you lose, the faster these things consume power to replace the shields. Um, and we only had eight Naquium accumulators. Uh, and we hit an asteroid so big that it actually smashed through the shield. That might not be an issue, actually. It probably happened when we went through the asteroid belt. So if we're going through places with uh, just regular asteroid density, that might not happen again. Could reduce the nose to one layer? Yeah, no, we'd be dead. We've seen a layer of shield get destroyed. That was a big hit on the other side, yeah. Um, the other thing is, well, no, I know with, hmm, with 3770 hull stress, this thing was able to reach 250. So as long as we've got enough accumulators now, it should get there. Um, our target speed is also climbing back up because the accumulator charge was low. All right, 247, 248, 249, 250. Spatial distortion is ticking down. It seems... I was going to say it seems to be stuck on 600, but no. If we can avoid any power dips... Yeah, I think, I think it was just accumulator. Not capacity, but how quickly it can output. The, uh, the max output of all of our accumulators. So we went from 8 accumulators to uh, 18. We more than doubled it. These are 3 second seconds, yes. Yeah, so it's going to be, uh, I guess it's going to be most of 30 minutes, real time, assuming nothing bad happens before we win. I, I see little dips in production, but I think that's just, oh no, the accumulated charge is trending downward. Oh no, this can't be happening. How fast are we going? Two... Uh, I should probably limit our top speed to, like, 250. Um... Why don't I just remove this? T 
target speed 250 period do you even have enough journey left yeah yeah we do uh i think pretty sure Okay, accumulator charge is trending back upward. That might be because the Nexus stopped consuming so much power. But if we don't go significantly over 250, then we're going to be burning less energy. Um, Alright, 250... go. It just immediately dropped back down. Why? Ugh. It shouldn't even be close. Like, this is 7 gigawatts of power. It's it's because of the shields. Hmm. Most, most of the time... The shield consumption is trivial, but when it hits big rocks, it's actually a problem. Also, why is our production dip, our max production dipping down to 6.1? Uh... You know what we might have to do? I don't know if it's even going to help. If we upgrade laser damage, we stop spending quite as much power on our defenses. Hmm. We're so close. Laser damage, energy weapon damage. I don't think we're going to do it this trip. Maybe. How much science do we have stored here? Uh, quite a lot, actually. We can actually clear out this energy weapon damage 10 immediately. Replace some defenses with uranium ammo gun turrets. Uh, it's not going to make that much difference unless we can shoot down the big asteroids. Well, it's going to make... Hmm. If the little asteroids don't hit the shields... I mean, that's why we're upgrading the laser turrets. If the little asteroids don't hit the shields, then we have that much more energy. But I don't know if it's going to make a functional difference. I'm thinking the moment something big enough hits the shield, we can't keep the Nexus running. But I don't understand why... Why our power production maximum doesn't say 7 gigawatts all the time. It keeps flicking over to it. We've got water. We've got lots of water. We've got lots of... Steam. In fact, the output is full. You can see... Internal, internal turbine steam and the input is saturated all the time. Please tell me we're just... Wait, what's what's up with this one? Are you kidding me? Okay, so this... This steam turbine gener... This high temp turbine generator on the end is not getting enough steam. Even though... 
I guess that does skew to the right over here, but that that should not be enough of a of an issue. I could hmm, I could pump steam over this way. Isn't this going to add to our hull stress? We're probably going to stop now. 3502. Let's get rid of one accumulator. I think we added more accumulators than we need. Oh, wow. That made a much bigger difference than I thought it would. Just by itself. And we're going to stop seeing output full over here quite so much. Yeah. That one pump. How much fuel do we have left? 90%. What's our speed? 250. It just dropped again. I think I have to set this to like 252. So that the automatic speed thing doesn't drop us down. Disabled by script. Yeah, well there's your problem. Just don't drop below 250. Ooh, uh, okay. Unlimited. How fast are we going to go if it's unlimited? We should have way more than enough power now. Two forty-four. Two forty-seven. Two fifty. 253. There was a big boy that hit you? I think this is it. We've got a spare gigawatt at all times, almost. Uh, we've, we've almost got a spare gigawatt, literally at all times, is what I meant to say. Uh, and we've more than doubled our accumulator max output. Our uh, charge is trending upwards. And we're not slowing down. 266 is our speed. Wait, 266? Wow. Maybe we could have done it with, like, a couple less engines as well. I don't think the laser upgrade made a substantive difference. We just took damage. Uh, even though there was a shield here. What? Uh, I guess move these four forward one tile is what I should do. But I'm too scared to do that now. Hmm, I could... I could do it when there's no... Uh, really? No, 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 don't put it in the trash. Good grief. That was concerning. And move this here. And this goes here, this goes here. Well, that was an easy fix. One off, indeed. 
And we haven't lost any time on the Nexus. Still got tons of water. Actually, uh, water's almost scary, but we've actually got a lot of 5k steam that we can't really see. Stand with your PLD on the prow of the ship to shoot the asteroids yourself? Yes. I think this is it. Funny how we tested this and nothing damaged it before. I'm just really glad we just happened to have those tiles that we could move that forward. Ooh, that's scary. If I hadn't fixed that, that probably would have smashed the, uh, the walls. We are getting close to one-fifth of the way done. What's supposed to happen after the Nexus countdown? Victory. Uh, we are able to travel to another star cluster, I guess. Jandacast, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Before the Spidertron, inventories counted into inventory stress. I think people used to make spider nests. Yep, I definitely, I, I, I could definitely see that. I wonder if, uh, if we had this back here, would there be any danger of an asteroid hitting it? Also, we probably only need like two fewer, um, engines, since we're able to get to 267, um, and every little bit of speed is like that much harder to get. Yeah, there's definitely a bit of room for optimization here. MC? Wait, what? We are almost a quarter of the way through. First optimization would be not being at one third time. Nonsense. This just means we get to appreciate it for longer. I can't believe how much difference that one pump made. Uh, and I'm not complaining. We probably added more, I mean, I'm sure we added more accumulators than was necessary, and I don't care. I hate pipes so much in Factorio, they have a mind of their own. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when we make uh, great big symmetrical power plants, and then we get very asymmetrical fluid behavior. That stuffs everything up. Pumps make a huge difference when you've got almost empty pipes. Indeed. Pumps cause unidirectional flow. Yes. Oh, we also got another energy weapon damage done. So there's that. Well, 
Uh, I guess we have another... Uh, let's see. Uh, about 21 minutes in real time before we finish. If nothing goes wrong. I bet that the unidirectional flow is a significant portion of the improvement. Yeah, because we had eight of these, uh, and I... Uh, we had eight of them for symmetry, and I removed one so that we could fit the nexus here. And then we had the, uh, high temp heat exchangers left over from where they were before. Uh, and this one I noticed earlier, but I didn't see the significance of it. Um, I didn't think it would be significant enough. This one, for example, was often output full with the steam, so I just assumed all of these were saturated. Um, but I, I more expected there would be a problem outputting the 500 degree steam or the water, but it turned out to be this one on the end was starving. Uh, and all I had to do was give some of the steam a little push over this way. Or a big push. I mean, looking at the flow rate here, it's only getting up to 250. And a lot of the time it's zero, so... It really didn't take much. Uh, it was it was actually really, really close to already working. And we are one third of the way done. It's a massive push because it's so low in amounts. Uh, no, I mean... If you look... At, because this is producing steam, this is producing steam. These two should be more than enough for this one. I'm not entirely sure why they're not, to be honest. Um, so we've got... Like, these four should be able to feed these two. Um, but for whatever reason, there's more steam over this way. Um, yeah, it really doesn't make sense to me. If there was more steam being produced here and less over here, then shouldn't it have flowed this way? Had a tank been attached to the steam pipes, it would have solved the issue? How so? But a pump is smaller, indeed. Outer left was struggling for water. N yeah, no, this one was struggling for steam. For 5,000 degree steam. Weirdly enough. Um, and now, this pump that we added to fix the problem is only pumping at, like, an average of 100 a second or something. Considering these things consume over a 1,000 per second each, this was actually incredibly close to just working all the time. Actually, now that I think about it, considering we only need a bit more than 6.25 gigawatts, let's call it 6.3 gigawatts consistently. I'm really surprised that didn't just resolve itself. The thing above it? Factorio fluids don't work the way you think. It's not like it flows faster because of the fullness is lopsided. It definitely should. The thing above it, though. I'm not sure. Pretty happy with this ship, though. Gotta think about it like a really fast assembler. Hmm. The pipe? Or something else?
that's either output or input starved. Well, there would have been plenty of output here, plenty of input here, and there should have been like a cascading effect. This is kind of relaxing. The outermost heat exchanger on the left was having water trouble. Um, I'm not sure about that one. Constantly checked different ones, but some took a moment between runs to fill up. Not cascading because it's lopsided due to reaching its limits of transfers. Pipes are not working in sync. I see. That that I can so it's like a traffic jam. That's like Isn't that like the opposite of how a fluid would work? It is. Okay. No wonder it's so counterintuitive. Factoria is not trying to simulate fluids, yeah, because it would be too UPS costly. Did they actually try to do it before, and that's why, like, nuclear power plants were so expensive UPS wise? Oof, asteroid. I guess it is full, never mind then, indeed. We're more than halfway there. We've still got 90% of our antimatter stream, despite all of this mucking around. Uh, water supply on the right side looks concerning, but the one on the left side is actually way more full, weirdly enough. So, I don't think we're running out any t oh, you've got to be kidding me. No. No, 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 no. No. Not this way. Um. Why? Because this is a bit lopsided to the right? No, compared to where the pumps are. But compared to where the water comes back. Uh, this is all the one row of containers, though. So now we've got... Water is getting more and more pushed to the left in aggregate. I don't... Uh, we could add another pump here. We, we can literally only just afford a pump here. Is that going to help? How fast are you pumping? Not very fast. I mean, it might make a difference. This is all because these are slightly to the left of the center of these. You would think the way that we've got water recycled straight back to here, water recycled straight back to here, and so on, would be overkill to prevent something like this from happening. 
but apparently not. We are at least consuming water over here now. As long as we don't run out of steam, it's not an issue. This still has 4k. That pump might have actually been enough to prevent catastrophe. The only reason fluids are so weird is the devs want fluids sloshing back and forth when you look at the tooltip of a semi-full pipe. Hmm. Maybe they should fake it instead. They've had problems with optimizing for one CPU, degrading performance for another. Could have made fluids almost free UPS-wise if they dropped the animation requirement. Hmm. We're down to 200 seconds. There's still constantly 4k steam in this one. We're doing 50 steam per second from the temp exchanger, uh, the heat exchanger all the way on the right. I think we're going to make it. What a strange couple of additions we had to make here. Pump steam to the left, pump water to the right. It's actually increasing how quickly this one can make water, uh, steam. I think we're fine. I think we are fine. One seventy-seven seconds remain. Less than three minutes. I'm glad I didn't uh, say, well, this is going to take X minutes, let's look somewhere else. Let's try and find... Let's try and get ahead of any other little crises that could pop up and threaten to pull the rug out from under us at the very end. Uh, there's actually only 600 steam in here. But we've got the 1.9k internal steam. Hmm, this is a little concerning. I think we're going to be okay. Kind of wish I'd had some containers for steam in here. After all that. I guess if... I guess if these hold 4k steam each, it's not going to make that much of a difference. This will take X minutes, let's look somewhere else, looks back after X minutes, finds asteroid fragments and a dissip dissipating cloud of antimatter. Yeah. We're almost down to two minutes. This is our target, 10 minutes. 10 minutes of this being a straight line. And despite that, you can actually see the production. You can see the little spikes of having to 
consume more power. Uh, to support the defenses. Got enough antimatter in the reactors? Yeah, way more than enough. We could probably almost have done this five times in one trip if there was no mucking about at the start. At the top, I mean. Anti oh, in the... Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I brought two stacks for each of them. Oh, four stacks, rather. So... We've actually gone through almost half a stack for each of these. And the input control is broken. It's fine, I don't care. That, that's why we've wasted so much. I think the inserters were out of sync earlier. Um, just like what happened at Fonestra. So we've been burning antimatter canisters at maximum speed, pretty much. Completely wasting um, fuel. But I would rather just keep the accumulators fully charged. The system's close to the limit, so you want don't want logic on it. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, oh no, 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 no! I'm seeing that flickering again. Oh no, we're so close. Eighty seconds. Uh, is it really going to end this way? We've got 4.3 gigajoules in the accumulators. How much? We've got 17 of them. Uh, 2.5 megawatts each. That's only 42 megawatts. That's not going to be enough if it comes to that. It's going to be so close. This one's still going mostly full speed. Eee. We're 90% of the way there. It's only for... Uh, it only has to be for a split second. You're kidding me. We're going to be undone by fluid mechanics in the last minute. Oh, the tragedy. If I'd filled up the water a bit higher, this might not have happened. We're so close. Go up front and shoot the rocks? That's not the problem. I'm not going to be able to shoot down the big asteroids anyway. Those are the only real issue. Move all the containers for antimatter that, and hand feed? Wait, what? Oh. The hull stress doesn't matter because... Uh, container stress doesn't matter because it's below hull stress. It's only the larger number that matters. Rocks hitting the shields is the problem. Every little bit helps. Yeah, but it's... um. We're running out... We're running out of the steam that lets us have enough of these high temp turbine generators running um, to keep this going. I'm actually really surprised it hasn't... Uh, I see flickers and yet the countdown is still going. We're so close. Does the railgun go over or through the spaceship wall? Through. Don't jinx it. This is this is gonna be so clutch. I can't believe it's come down to this. 20 seconds, and we're getting little tiny flickers that somehow don't cause the Nexus to fail. 
fly in front and use the railgun, I'll die. I actually will die. Here comes a big asteroid. We're down to single digits. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. It, the flickers are getting worse. Five. Four. Big asteroid. Three. Two. One. Oh my god. I can't believe how close that was. I don't know exactly what the threshold is where the Nexus would have given up. Thank you all so much. I'm sorry that follow or better went high too fast for me to see it. Well played, sir. Very clutch ending. Indeed. I couldn't have scripted a better ending. Gonna go for the ring wing? Uh, ring win? Yeah, I will. Um, I might put some time in off stream so that you don't have to watch, uh, just copy pasting solar panels 200,000 times in order to get the anchors. Um, so do I have to, do I have to stop this thing so that we can get back into like real space? Um, what's the deal with that? Time to go home before everything really turbo explodes. It, yeah, it's gonna be fine. It's not gonna, like... Is this thing stuck, or...? Let's just pick it up. Kaboom. A seventeen minutes. So where are we now? I actually still have no idea. Um Unstoppable. Closest is Interstellar Grotto. Oh. Oh, this is where we are. That's kind of random. I picked a destination at the exact opposite direction, almost. Zoom out. Zoom out. Grats, thank you, Benwi. Woke up in time to see the win. Nice. Lost in space, indeed. Well, that was good. I have to remember to change the uh, string title after the fact. Who is playing Factorio today? Uh, how about Mucky? Uh. Ekane, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Can I filter this? I can. Uh, let's see. And thank you for the follow, Kata, as well. And Jandakast.
So you tried to leave this star cluster one way, but came back the opposite end? Oh no, it's a cursed star cluster, you're never going home. Indeed. Uh, Judah, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Uh, let's drop in on Mucky. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me all this time. Right to the clutchy end. Un unrecognized command. There we go. Bye, T-Hex. Thanks for hanging out, Veldek. And thanks again for the subs. Night Dancer, take care. Chucky, thanks for hanging out. Can I unsub and unfollow now? My heart is breaking. Can you check the Informatron? Uh, sure. Star mapping. I think we already looked at that. Is there anything else? There's like a journal somewhere, right? What am I looking for? I don't think there's anything new. Exploration journal. Exploration journal. There it is. Spaceship victory. I built an extremely fast and powerful spaceship and activated the distortion drive. It took a while for the drive to stabilize it into a practical FTL state. But once it did, I was able to enter cryo sleep. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not sleeping, panicking over the power system like that. For the subsequent journey home to a galaxy far, far away. I leave behind an autonomous interstellar empire built from the ground up. Or does anyone do it differently where uh, the way they make their bases? I'd be interested right. to know because... I am back. Oh my goodness oh God, me, just God. in time for a T-Hacks raid of 112 people. T-Hacks, 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 the fifth. Oh, what the fuck, Lucky? <laughs> G'day, Raiders. Hey, Garden. T-Hacks, thank you so much um, for the uh, for the raid, mate. That is that is much appreciated. Um, is Powell fucked? No. Why is that? Is that all right? No, or it's is fine. It just, uh...